Hey, let's start the show. It's August 30th, 2012. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. I'm Will Smith. Joining me today with the magic fingers, Norman Chan, how you doing? Okay. You're making waggly magic fingers there. Why was that? Um, fake piano. I love music. Oh, you were piano playing? Yeah. Could, could you, now, are you, I know you played piano for a long time as a youth. Mm -hmm. Do you have the capability to listen to our theme music and, and play it on piano? Over time, yes. How much time? Uh, do you have a lot of pianos and a lot of monkeys? I'm not talking about infinite monkeys and infinite pianos. I'm talking about one Chan. One chance? And Chan. Oh, okay. You. And, and how infinite many chances? Time. As long as you want. Oh, yeah. Take your time. Absolutely. Figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Over time, yeah. Uh, joining us today, as uh, as it seems like always now. Yeah. Seems like you've never not been here, Joey. <laughs> yeah. uh, Joey Famelli, how are you doing, sir? Good. Take, taking I, a break from the push-ups. Yeah, the push-ups and the weights now. Last week, we were sitting there watching you do like <laughs> curls with the big giant weights, and, and it made both of us feel kind of inadequate. And then Wes was aiming the other way, so he didn't see you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing today? Good. Good? Good. I could probably figure that out on a bass guitar. Okay. It seems like That's there's some the bass guitar well, in bass there. bass guitar, only, you only play one... That's the thing. Note I need like time. the one note. If I had a guitar, I can do the one note. All right, here's this but note. But it's a complex melody. So where, which would you pick out? I can't say I can figure out the or, the orchestra, like the whole right. thing. I, I can figure out the notes being played. You can figure out the It's part. like if you listen to a song, if you're a bassist, you can hear the bass line very clearly. And you can, it's, it's easy to pick out a bass line. Yeah, or I can, go, I can figure out the guitar, the guitar notes or the chords, the notes that are being played, mm -hmm. and then create a bass line from there. It's funny, even playing rock band like gave me an, like I I noticed the bass line and the drum lines after playing rock as somebody who's never really played instruments much more after that after playing a lot of rock band like the relationship between the bass and the the, the drums ba the bass and the drums oh, and the green note you was never able to pick them out <laughs> no no not not necessarily that but just like I noticed it in music more like I would notice when oh this is a tricky bass line because like it's all over the place and it's kind of trilling and it's mm. crazy and I never would have ever noticed that before I don't think rock band's fun. I like rock band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2000, <laughs> 2008. Joey's right. the rock, it's a rock band. Rock band's all right. This, two, this okay. new game is fun. Hey, 2007 to 2009. Uh, rock band Blitz came out last night. It's completely off topic, but I, I've, uh, Eric Pope sent me a code for that the other day, so I've been playing that for the last few nights, and it is awesome. Do you know what it is? I am vaguely aware of this. Do I need to d dig up my old no, instruments? No, no instruments. What am I doing? Uh, it is, uh, did you ever play audio surf, the PC game where you have like, you put your music in your MP3 and it generates like a, a kind of rock band guitar hero style it's a rip track. Off of audio surf? No, I'm not. Is that a flash game? No, it's a, it's a real game. Oh. It was one of the first indie games on steam. No, I never played that. Uh, so basically what it is, is you have the, the track thing from guitar hero, right? Remember or the highway guitar hero rock band, the highway. Yeah. Um, and you have is one what section called? the highway. That's what I call it. I don't know. It might really? be, maybe there's, there's somebody else. lanes on the highway. There's an Shipping official name lanes. for it, but it's not tracks or highway, I don't think. All right. Anyway, I like, I like the road. The <laughs> you have one for each instrument in the song. So most of the songs, it's it's uh, guitar, bass, drums, vocal, right? And there's some with keyboard as well. And basically, you're, it's just a rhythm game for each of the instrument breakdowns. And you're not supposed to play. It's not a co-op game. You don't play with like four or five people. Um, you, you literally just play the rhythm game. And it's, it's all about tapping left side, right side, and time with the rhythm for that instrument on each instrument, and then switching strategically to other instruments. So you'll play the guitar part for a little bit, and then you'll switch over to drums, and then you'll play bass, and then you'll switch over to vocal. And it's all about filling up meters in segments of the song so that you then open up higher levels of boost. And it's, it's basically a leaderboard score game that's just incredibly, the leaderboard aspect of it is incredibly damaging. Hmm. Like it's the kind of thing that you set out and you look up and you're like, oh, I meant to play this for 20 minutes and it's been four hours. Um, and I think it's an XBLA game. I don't know what it costs, but but uh, yeah, it came out last night really late. And like, it's been fun because the last couple of days, the leaderboards have been four dudes or, or 20 or 30 people. And now I'll, like at midnight, I flipped over and all of a sudden all of the songs that I was like number 20 in the world on, I was somewhere in the uh -huh. 500s. Yeah, no longer worth playing. I know. 
Uh, but yeah, that's out. What else? What, what have you been doing, Mister Chan? What did you 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 had a an adventure this weekend? You, you vodka watermelon on Friday did not work. Why didn't it work? Uh, the vodka did not fill up the watermelon. It was not like <laughs> the watermelon season five of nine hundred two one zero where they filled Wait, the water hold on. watermelon up with vodka. I didn't watch season five season- of nine hundred two one zero. Was this a? Was um, this a? Is that the one where the kid shot himself? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> why do you know about why? Why? Why are this, this is the reference I heard? Oh, you flow was there. Uh, that uh, watermelon was filled with vodka. I don't know. Too now. Did someone um, get alcohol poisoning and have to We, we found out a how to on Huffington Post, and the how to did not work. Apparently, sticking the neck of the vodka bottle into the watermelon. So you're saying uh, Huffington Post lied to you? Did not. The video they embedded. From YouTube. Not, did, did, yeah, from YouTube did not mm. show an accurate how to for. So the watermelon just didn't take, it just stayed sober. It, it was more of a vodka splashed on watermelon. And and the worst part is you empty out part of the cavity of a watermelon in order to get the nozzle in. And, and that's the best part of the watermelon. Oh, and so you cord out the you center? You don't cord out the center, you cord out a little, like a ball from the center. A hole. A, you make a hole and then you carve out a little yeah. bit. So there's a, a reservoir. Think of it as a cave. You know, as if someone dug into the earth and created a cave and then plunged a giant vodka bottle into the earth and filled it up. And hopefully the vodka soaks into all the crevices of the watermelon. I guess it depends on from watermelon to watermelon, the the sponginess of it. I like a spongy watermelon. Do you think it was a, there was an airlock in the in the vodka bottle or something? That's, so it just that's, didn't. The, that out? was my suggestion. Uh, that was my thought. I thought that we, I needed some way for air to bubble into the bottle to refill yeah. it because air pressure is not enough to collapse the and gravity isn't enough. But you would think the watermelon would still just soak in the liquid, right? But how does air fill back into the bottle? I mean, there's, you, it's not a vacuum. Because yeah, you're squeezing. The, well, there is a vacuum at the top of it. So I mean, there's, there's air, the air that needs to be, vo- vodka needs to be replaced with air. Yeah. Or else it's just going to not come out of the bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why you use a funnel normally, because the funnel doesn't have an and unlock sa- problem. And both Safeway and Lucky's, uh, the supermarkets in the, our local region do not sell funnels. Really? Yep. Surprising. The, well, your hardware store sells a funnel. I have bought a funnel at the hardware store by I your did house. Not, did not visit the, the hardware, hardware store. Hardware store is always, it's the go-to place for funnels. You know what also works? What also works, John? Shots of vodka. <laughs> And bites of watermelon. And bites of watermelon. So you're there saying you, you put the watermelon in your mouth and then you do the you shot of vodka? Shot and just wash it down. Wash the watermelon down with some vodka. Mm. And do you light any of that on fire or not so no, much? No, no, that's not flammable okay, enough. Not a good idea. Is vodka flammable? Uh, it, it burns like really quick. Like the alcohol burns off so fast on that. Hmm. On like you know, Bacardi 151. You're saying it would make a, a very poor uh, explosive device. Yeah, you'd see a, a blue flame and nothing. <laughs> Isopropyl alcohol doesn't burn either. What what doesn't isopropyl? You know the stuff you use to clean cuts and mm. I mean it kind of does, but not really. It's not. It doesn't get hot. Neither does mouthwash. Really? You tried to burning mouth, mouth? Why did you ever try to burn no, mouthwash? I'm just saying mouth, mouthwash does not have enough alcoholic oh. content to burn. Okay, well, good talk, guys. <laughs> See you all uh, next week on another episode. Uh, so I think that the conversation we just had is marginally more interesting than what what's to come. But the big story this week is about patents. Cue the theme music. Yeah. Um, Samsung versus Apple went to trial. Uh, they they saw about had about a month of lawyers talking to the jury. Uh, the jury went into the deliberation room with a sheet of instructions that had like 700 different criteria. So it had instructions for three different companies, uh, Samsung of America, Samsung of Korea, and... Um, uh, one of the other, like Samsung is a conglomerate of dozens and dozens of companies. So the the lawsuit was Apple versus three of Samsung subsidiaries, basically. Okay. Um, and they sued, uh, Apple sued Samsung about uh, over infringement on a handful of devices that are mostly kind of old at this point. It's all like Galaxy uh, S1 and Galaxy S. I think there were a couple of Galaxy S2 phones in there. I can't remember. Um uh, a lot of devices that are no longer even in production, really, are no longer for sale in the U.S. Uh, but it wasn't about getting those phones off the shelves. It was about getting money. It, it, well, it's and about getting it. money and stopping Samsung from doing the same thing. Uh, again, I think is probably what Apple would argue. Um, so the criteria, I'm not going to get into it here because it's crazy complex. There was a really good breakdown on The Verge uh, that they explains. Have lawyers. Yeah, they, they have people who have law degrees and understand patents explaining the whole thing. Um and and it, it the gist is that Apple has patents on a lot of things 
like all the way down to square icons with rounded corners. And yeah, when Steve Jobs announced the iPhone and it pinched the zoom and everyone oohed and on and gasped, he says, and boy, did we patent the hell out of it. He really wasn't kidding. Mm-hmm. Patents on everything. 2007. Um, so the jury verdict came in on Friday, which was kind of a surprise because I think people expected it to take a lot longer. Uh, the jury did not want to stay over the weekend. There's a lot of speculation that the jury was just fed up by this point and was just like, fuck it. Hey, they got their show. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Um, so the 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 TLDR of the story, and if you want to know the specific details, and you should go read the Verge article because I think it's the best thing I read, uh, is that... Basically, Apple won on all of the phone stuff. Everything that, with more or less, with a few exceptions, uh, the majority of the phone arguments that they had, uh, Samsung lost on. And a lot of this stuff was related directly to TouchWiz, not necessarily core Android UI. So if you recall, I'm not a big fan of the Galaxy S1 version of TouchWiz, which I think is probably the worst piece of phone software I've ever used. So you're saying everything they did to make the phone worse actually came back to bite them in the ass. To the tune of $1.05 billion. Potentially more. Potentially more. Um, The tablet stuff, interestingly, the jury didn't... uh, So so a lot of the stuff was the jury deciding if the patents were valid and first they decided if Samsung infringed the patents, then they decided if the patents were valid, and then they awarded damages based on guidelines given by the judge. The... Uh, they decided that most of the infringement was valid. They decided that most of the patents were valid. And then they applied to and multiplied out to get $1.05 billion in damages, basically. Although, like Norm said, Apple is coming back and saying, hey, we want triple damages, which is some... Th- there's a lot of legal stuff going on. Uh, so what, what does this mean to normal people? You mean you can't buy Samsung stuff anymore? No, not yet. Oh. Uh, T-Mobile is still selling those Galaxy S3s. A lot of the phones that were on the list uh, are are injuncted against now. So you, I, this is going to shock you, but Samsung won't be able to sell the the Samsung Captivate in the U.S. anymore, which was a phone that came out in June of 2010 and is, hasn't been for sale in more than a year. So a lot of the phones from 2010 to early 2011 aren't available anymore. They've been injuncted against... By the way, they haven't been on sale for six months anyway. So those were previously injuncted against. Yes, they were already injuncted. Okay. Yes. And after the ruling, Uh, that's going to stay the same. It seems like, but nobody cares because. And the new phones. uh, It's unclear what it means for the new phones. There are eight eight devices. Uh, Yeah, they're unlikely. Obviously, the stuff that was directly ruled against in this case is going to not change. I would be shocked if TouchWiz comes out, the next version of TouchWiz comes out with square icons with rounded corners. Is this good for innovation or bad for innovation? Uh, I don't know. The answer what is you, it's good for innovation. Really? Yeah. You mean, you think it's going to force people to try new things? I, I think, I think yes, absolutely. I mean, the so it seems like the, the biggest issue is that one of the things that is, was on the, the, the list of criteria that was ruled as a violation of Apple's patents is the rectangular phone with a solid face and a single button. That is a, that is a, if you look at early Android phones made by not Google, Google, uh, I can't remember who did it, but there's a really good breakdown of the Nexus devices made by people, companies that weren't Samsung at showing, look, like the Nexus One HTC designed in such a way that it broke up the lines on the front of the phone, so it looks like it's two toned. And there's well, even the very first Nexus. On. You know, we're talking about that's well, the Nexus One. The, the very first Nexus or the very first uh, HTC uh, Android phone. The, um, the G One. The G One had the, you know little nub balls and stuff, and yeah, trackball yeah. and and stuff like that. Um, they moved closer, and then they've now moved further away again. Uh, I, I I think probably. Uh, oh, other thing that's going to happen is probably the Galaxy Tab 10.1 is going to be on sale again shortly. So that that has not been available for a while. I don't really think people care because I think they sold like 35,000 of those or something. But, mm-hmm. you know, just in case. Um, I, I, I honestly, I, I think Google, uh, I don't think it's going to mean a whole lot for Android. I think that, that there's a lot of speculation from people that think it might cost more now for manufacturers to manufacture Google devices uh, because they have to license patents from all sorts of different places, even more places than before. Um, may, Google right. says it really doesn't affect them because the the stuff that Samsung did was on top of Android and it wasn't stock Android. The alphabetical listing of apps not on the home screen is very different from the way Apple did things. 
and people especially a vertical story. scrolling and yeah. all that stuff horizontal yeah. scrolling vertical scrolling uh, and having widgets on the home page like that, all the stuff that makes android really good now that's n- none of that infringes on apple's patents i mean the only thing that that is um kind of universal is the rectangular design of the phone with a very small limited number of buttons on the home screen. Now Android doesn't have any physical buttons on the front. It's mm-hmm. all, I mean, for the most part, it's all uh, soft buttons built into the screen, the capacitive touch screen. So, um, are most of these, are most of these, um, things that they violate are just, are they as pedantic as softened edges and rounded it's stuff? In, I mean, is it, yep. So it's not, it's it doesn't tangible. Like little, Yep, <laughs> it's 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 a, a lot of it's stuff that they call des- it's called design trim, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm going to explain this badly, and you guys can give me shit about it in the comments. But basically, it is the type of the small design touches that indicate uh, uh, that, that indicate kind of brand awareness that Apple spends. So one of the things that they talked about in the trial was the amount of money that Apple has spent marketing iPhone and iPad. Um, and whether that constituted a design that was kind of universally recognized as Apple-y design. Um, and, and so those, that, that's when you're talking about things like square icons with rounded corners, that's what they're talking about. And it, it sounds super pedantic. The, the counter argument to that is whether these, these ideas are concepts that are universal and important enough that you you can't build a device the other way. In which case, if there's a patent, then they ha- they're required to license it out according to a set of arcane rules that I don't pretend to understand. Did Motorola ever license or uh, patent flip phone technology? I have no idea. Flip phones. The the flip the, the one that f- they having, invented having a phone that flips open that unfolds uh, vertically. Typically. Yeah. Smart tech. Is that <laughs> Star tech. Like? Star tech. That's yeah. what I had. Um, the example of the thing that is universal is the steering wheel. So, you know, even though Knight Rider looked really cool with that partial circle steering wheel, it's no good because you can't do hand over hand turns with it. Like nobody makes square steering wheels or triangular steering wheels or has a, a pole with a stick on it that comes out that you spin around, you know, like you're stirring a, a, a pot of dough or something. Um, a yoke. Yeah, yokes. Nobody uses a flight stick to steer a car. Oh. Imagine if you could use head tracking to a steer a car. Um, so yeah, the steering wheel is something that even if somebody had patented it, of course it's, it was invented at a time before we were patenting every stupid idea. Um, it, it ends up, it would end up being something that the, that the patent office would require them to license for a fair fee. Or Need more innovation in steering, steering technology. Well, that's the, you know, increased competition. Have you seen the self-driving cars yet? They're out there. They don't even need steering wheels. I want gesture based, pinch to zoom, <laughs> pinch to accelerate. I want, you just want to use Google voice and say, slide to accelerate. Google, a drive giant, me to work. Yeah, giant ball. Why not a ball based steering? Yeah. What if the wheels are balls? I don't like how it's going. Crazy. Then the then the car can go in any direction you want. It doesn't have to turn. Wow, change direction. Mag balls. Yeah, mag ball wheels. Get on it, people. No, so that, you, you parallel park like crazy with those. Yeah, you don't even have to parallel did park. Did you not see Dark Knight Rises? The, the, the tumbler thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the wheels, they, were, they spun. Mm. The wheels do spin, Norm. Mm. Wheels do spin. All axes. Um... So yeah, probably not a whole lot of change in the short term. I think that uh, Microsoft high five in itself. Yeah, Microsoft feels really good because part of their licensing deal with Android with Apple was that they wouldn't they would stay away from certain of these core design ideas, and one of them was the square icons with rounded corners. They just went for square. Yeah, they just went pure blocks. Um, So yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. I wonder if the section in the Jobs auto the Jobs biography about finding no square corners in nature and that being one of the core tenets of OS uh, Mac OS design philosophy from the early eighties on uh, was, was in, was added thinking about this eventuality right. about yeah. that patent. Yeah. Um, I think it's arbitrary either way. The, the thing that Samsung really got busted on is the willful violation of these patents. Explain that they, they, it wasn't a coincidence that they violated the patents. They did it on purpose to mislead consumers into believing their products were the iPhone. Hold on, wait. You mean they made TouchWiz look like the iPhone so that people would pick it up and think, oh, this is an iPhone. I should buy this because iPhone is good. I, I could not imagine like being in that scenario, walking in a store, ever confusing a Samsung product with an iPhone uh, or with an Apple product. Have you seen um, the Galaxy Tab 10.1? 
I still I couldn't do it. You're an informed consumer. Exactly. I I, I don't know. I can't put myself in the mind of an, an uninformed consumer of a of a uh, chud, as it were. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's what they said. Basically, that was that was that was why the penalties were were so high, and unlike like the typical FCC uh, penalty, one billion dollars is a substantial sum of money even to a company the size of Samsung. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Samsung, as a big company, a billion dollars isn't going to ruin them. They do lose a lot of money in, the stock, uh, in their stock price uh, the following Monday. And Samsung wants to resolve this quickly because its other you know other divisions work with Apple uh, as you know, partners, so uh, not competitors. Yeah. I, I mean, Samsung provides flash memory, has provided CPUs in the past, has manufactured CPUs in the past. Um, and they... Well, I, I read an article in The Economist about the internal firewall at, at Samsung where the people that worked in the consumer products division, the phone division, have no idea at all what's going on. Like They're treated by the manufacturing division the same way that the manufacturing division treats Apple, the people who provide flash memory and stuff like that. So it, it's really interesting. The story of Apple and Samsung together is has been going on for a long time because Samsung provided a lot of the flash memory and Samsung... Because of Apple's investment in Flash with the Na- with the iPod Nano specifically and the and the Shuffle later, um, they ramped up uh, production of Flash memory and thus brought the price down of Flash memory a lot maybe earlier than it would have happened otherwise. Someone put it really hmm. funny uh, on, on on Twitter because uh, Apple paid Samsung about three point five billion uh, last year to buy parts for its products, and now it's getting a billion back. It's like a it's like a Groupon. Buy two get one free. <laughs> get the rebate. Yeah. Nice rebate. These are just two massive companies just doing some. We're talking about the biggest company in the world, and and another top fifty probably. Yeah, I don't know. I don't but know Samsung really doesn't care about. I mean, a lot of the stuff. Uh, this ruling just applies to sales in the U.S. and Apple is suing Samsung also in other countries, uh, U.K., Australia, New Zealand. Um, Samsung really doesn't care about that because it, it owns the Asian market. And that's where it's still number one smart, uh, hand, smartphone phone maker in the world. And Apple in the Asian market, which is rapidly growing, uh, is only number seven uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, so in the long run, Samsung's going to be fine. And I think uh, uh, it will uh, encourage them to innovate. And we're back. Good bathroom break. Yeah, that was the, you know, you, I think you guys could hold your bladder for more than 28 minutes, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so Google is suing Apple. Yes, uh, it's it's not supposed it's not retaliatory, but just coincidentally happened to happen at the end of this giant Samsung Apple case, which was to do with Android and stuff and things. Uh, Google is seeking an injunction blocking Apple imports of pretty much everything that they sell except for um, uh, a couple of Macs. Um, and of course, since Apple manufactures everything in China, that would that would be of detriment to their business for for fairly obvious reasons. Um, there are seven, pa- seven patents involved in the Google suing Apple case. Uh, it seems like a lot of them are, they're all Motorola patents, and they're ones that Motorola developed internally, not things that Motorola acquired. Uh, and I picked a couple of the ones that look more interesting, but it, the big ones are um, have to do with geographical or temporal gating of, of tasks, things like uh, the reminders reminding you when you leave your house Hey, don't forget to get milk when you're on your way to, to work or something like that. Very cool feature. A very cool feature. feature. Yes. Uh, notification control and filtering. So uh, I would assume that this would be infringing all the way back to the beginning of the notification manager in iOS, uh, which means anytime you, uh, you know, you go into that thing and instead of having, uh, you have a big long list of all the apps that have notifications, you can control them on an on app by app basis. And something I thought would actually be useful in iOS 5, and I actually never use it at all. Really? On the iPhone or the iPad. Oh, I just use it to turn everything off except for the four things I actually need notifications I, it, for. It, it, they, I mean, this is one of those things I thought would be super cool, and but Google does it so much better. Notifications. I see. I just, I love having the centralized resource. In iOS? It's not about centralized resource. I'm saying for management. I'm saying the thing that I don't like about Android is that you have to go into each app and figure out how they handle notifications oh, you're talking on about a per app the basis. Yeah. Rather than rather than sure. having okay. a centralized that, repository for that information. E- super easy fix for Android if they want, ever want to do that. Assuming it's not protected by some bullshit patent that, that Apple would be has. an extremely bullshit patent. Yes. But something simple like in Android to get rid of a notification, you pull down the notifications bar and you can swipe individual notifications away. That's good. With an action. 
You can do that with iOS too. Or you can just hit the yeah, X yeah, yeah, and everything. Hit the, yeah, hit, or you could hit the one and everything disappears. In yeah. iOS, you, gotta, you hit an X. There's no gesture to remove uh, no individual things. But you have to X out every single oh. notification. Yep. It's no, you, you you X out by category. I, it's mm. I never use when I, when I was talking about, never use notifications. When I was talking about the notification center, what I was talking about was the settings pane in notification in in for notifications. This thing right here. You're talking about like how yes, I want to set the thing that controls the notification center. Yeah. Okay, but the notification center itself. You're talking about the being, notifications. The no, notification center is what the thing is called when you pull it down. That is the really? notification center. Yes. I thought it was just called notifications. No, notification it's center called is the notification highway. <laughs> this so is super highway? when you pull when you drag down on your on your iPad or iPhone. Yeah. that is a notification center. See, the only place I ever use notifications is on the lock screen, where you can slide to remove them, or go jump straight into what you're looking at. So I use the ones that pop up on the on the lock screen. That's and, the only the I problem, never ever, ever pull the top. And down. also on uh, on iOS, you don't see, when notifications pop up, right? You see the top like you know twenty pixels rotate. Yeah. For that weird funky animation, new text messages. That's kind of useful, but things build up. And on Android, you have little icons, and on on Windows Phone, you have little icons indicating, okay, here are four little Twitter icons. You got four new tweets. So on iOS, that's not there. Well, it just shows the four things. No, it shows nothing on top of the taskbar. Oh, not on the taskbar. You're correct. Um, so taskbar yeah, is useful space. Let's see. Notification control and filtering and an input element that allows an audible prompt to be converted into a text string. That only infringes on the 4S. Uh, You're talking all, about Siri. I'm talking about an audible an input element that allows an audible prompt to be converted to a text string. I think it's, I think it's referring to the little the microphone button... That you can yeah. do text to speech with, hmm. but that seems crazy, crazy broad. Like it seems Audible like Dragon Naturally sounds Speaking like, would be. Sounds like sounds like you're you got to make a command as opposed to just pure text to speech. Well, I guess that's true. I mean, an audible prompt in the case of Siri would be the little doo 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 doo. You know, the chime that starts at the beginning. I don't know. The point Semantics. is, lawyers. Aww. You know who gets really rich on all this? Lawyers, 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 and expert witnesses. It turns out, expert witnesses make bank. Ooh, if you, if you can yeah. calculate, if you can, yeah. I know. Can you have your career as you can? Yeah, I guess there are people who are careers as I'm an expert witness. I, as I know like a expert couple. psychiatrists. Right? Like oh. this is exactly <laughs> this is this person has schizophrenia. This person has schizophrenia. They're crazy. I know people whose career is expert witness. Like they they are they can calculate damages. So they know how much money say Apple is losing as a result of oh, wow. Samsung's infringement. Right. In my experience. <laughs> that's how it all starts. It's not, it's, no, it's not about. It's all data driven. They all look at. They look at sales, and they look at this much, and they look at that, and they look at this sales versus that. And it's then, all a simple Excel formula. Yeah, you just yeah. Type in. exactly. It's just one. It's just it's it's like the Tyler Durden formula. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, and then the last thing in patent uh, apocalypse 2012 <laughs> is that HTC has come out and said, "No, Apple suing us. Fuck that. We're not settling. Let's go to the mat. They're not afraid." HTC is not afraid. HTC shows no fear. Well, HTC uh, should has, be scared shitless, and, and they're losing a ton of money. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's pretty lame. Um, HTC, the company that spent forty million dollars investing in OnLive. Hey, what a perfect segue into talking about OnLive laying all of their employees off, uh, transferring money to a transferring the company and the IP to a third uh, third party company, and then hiring back like twenty or thirty people, maybe sixty people of the three hundred that used to work there. Uh, so on live, still up the service on live. We've talked about it a lot in the past. On live, which uh, in 2008 launched at GDC, I actually took a meeting with um, Steve Perlman and I guess their PR person Tiffany Spencer back when they were not on live. I guess right before they launched, they were in their incubator. Before they announced the name, before uh, they were uh, at a tech incubator in San Francisco, working on the compression technology to show that this worked and. Uh, we all got a sense that we knew th this is, could be super cool as long as the business model was right, um, and the business model was never right. They fucked up the business model over and over again. Because, I mean, the big problem I had with the service when they launched was that they charged a fairly high monthly fee, like 10 or $12 a month, MMO-level monthly fee, at a time when people were already tired of paying MMO monthly fees. And then they, in order, that was just to use the service. Let's take a step back and talk about what okay. the service does. This is a good point. On Live was uh, the streaming video game service where uh, instead of having a high-end PC or buying an Xbox, 
you know, spending $300, $300 on an Xbox, you could, uh, through uh, your computer, web browser, or software on your computer, or a $100 uh, dedicated micro console, stream full video games just over your broadband connection. And their claim was that based on the average, they showed ton of statistics on uh, broadband penetration in the U.S., what the average bit rates, average pings were. They built these uh, data centers. No, they tapped they, into they, existing data centers. Yeah, they rented data centers, invested in data centers. They, well, they, they, they bought a lot of space in data centers yes. uh, to, and to run their software to basically say, okay, you don't need a $2,000 PC, gaming PC. You can have any computer you want, whether it's a MacBook Air, an iPad, a Ultrabook, even a netbook or an iPhone, and play something like Unreal, Tur- Unreal Tournament 3. Uh, you can play Crisis, which yeah. they demoed a lot, um, and... Uh, a bunch of other PC games, and all the heavy lifting is done on their side. All the heavy lifting, all, all the lifting, server period, side rendering yeah. is done on wow. the server, and it would just stream the video. But they think that based on your latency, because they had data centers they, uh, all over the country, they had seven or eight data centers, uh, the latency wouldn't be bad enough that you could play. You could still play. Like they were, you, it would be responsive enough that a signal from a controller in your hand will go to the micro console, go to the, your router, go to their data center, process, and come back. It's a TV screen as compressed 720p video, and it'd be just like playing the game in real time, even on a Twitch-based shooter. Um, so how did it work, Norm? The latency wasn't the problem. Uh, and you know, I thought the latency was the problem. No, the latency wasn't the problem. It was compression was the problem. I thought both latency and compression were the problem. I, I, I Playing a game like uh, Crisis was fine. So shooters were fine, in my experience. Anything that was fast, like racers and things yeah. like that, like playing Need for Speed was hard to, hard to play. You would constantly feel like your TV. It was like when you would play Rock Band and you hadn't calibrated your TV right, so the notes were coming a third of a second behind. You could not play Rock Band on this. Right. You couldn't play Something a fighting would, game. Would, would require you know less than fifty milliseconds of latency. Uh, you could not do on this. Right. Um, but and then there was some video compression, obviously, and it was based on your broadband connection, relying on your broadband connection. So. If someone started downloading a huge movie or something on on in your on your network, then the service could possibly be interrupted. But there was a lot of really cool potential um, data technology behind that with their interface because everything was video. So they could have software on their side and basically they could show you like a wall of every single game being played um, on, on the their service, service at once. Yeah. All the videos recorded, so uh, it's all video. So you could do playback, you record clips. And so they thought that was enough to charge you a monthly subscription service for all this benefit. And, and, well, and they gave free demos, free time limited demos of stuff as well. And free time, and you know, no downloading, you know, two gigs, three gigs for a game free. demo. You get to play; it'd be time based game demos, you know, running using server time. Yep. And but they would still sell you the games at full prices. So, for example, you could buy a game like Homefront or Batman Arkham, uh, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, for Arkham Asylum, fifty bucks, sixty bucks. Um, Basically, the PC version of the game adapted for on live because it's all running on PCs, and pay you know your five to ten dollar a month service for a game that if you ever got off their service, you would just lose access to the game. Wow! And yeah. so that, as you can imagine, was not very appealing for the vast majority of gamers. It was as if you subscribed to Xbox Live and any of the games you bought while you, it's it's like the PlayStation Plus deal, except you're also paying for the game. So because they had to work with game publishers to actually get games ported to the online service, and they were all PC games. It was, it was an easy porting process, is my understanding. Not easy port, porting process. They said it was an easy porting process, but it was not because they had to change all the settings, stuff, all the save mechanisms had to be adapted. Oh, right. Okay. Um, it was easier than... and. and it was easy, relatively easy for existing PC games, uh, but like console games never went on on live. Like console only games, you never had, you never had a uh, you know a Halo on on live. Right? What's, what's the monthly service on this? It, there was a monthly service. They realized quickly that that wasn't going to happen. That wasn't going to work. So they got rid of the monthly service and then also added a later on like a Netflix style, you know, pay a monthly ser- fee, but you get like a all you can eat, you know, or list of more, games. Yeah, but not all the all the games. The thing is, uh, they never had apparently more than sixteen hundred people playing on live games at once. Well, so we learned a lot of things. There was a Verge article written by Sean Hollister that came out earlier this week. That, um, I mean, it made some wild accusations about uh, the founder of the company's behavior and decision making ability and things like that. 
Uh, I don't want to get in that. The, the technical, they never overcame a certain technical the, Yeah, there were, there were two really interesting things Just that like, came out of that story. They never got the uh, the uh, virtual computing working on the server. So every time you played a game, you would, de- you would take up one server. One machine. One machine on their server farm. So they could never scale to, if the service, if the business model was right, they could never scale to millions of people playing at once if they ever got this in hotel rooms mm-hmm. and in like in TVs, built into TVs and built into uh, set-top consoles like they wanted to, it would never work that way. It would, um, Basically, it seems like there was no way for them to get out of the problems that they'd built with their service. Yes. Um, and and the implication was also that when other companies came and looked to per- acquire them, they dug deep into how it worked and then either were interested or when they started asking the wrong questions, they were run off. Well, I mean, HTC invested forty millions on the, million dollars on their uh, in OnLive because they wanted exclusive OnLive on their phones. So, right. well, HTC also has to deal with Beats, but um, so does HP. Uh, so does HP. But imagine if you had gotten a phone, HTC phone, and one of the selling points was buy an HTC phone and you get access to you know Crisis and all these cool games with touch controls over Wi-Fi, streaming over Wi-Fi. Uh, exclusive access. Yeah, that's that's appealing. Crisis it's, with it's touch controls video. doesn't sound good to me. Well, other games. Okay, you know, good looking games. The upshot is they built a really kind of neat service that seemed to be a little smoke and mirrors. I mean, the single machine thing is is amazing because in a world where everything else is going virtualized and and is is like literally when you buy an Amazon server, what you're buying is a instanced machine that runs on a like a. Well, you can do that because. It's running. You're instancing it on the CPU, right? And because when you're talking about games, you can't instance. You There's can't no run multiple games at the same time. There's no software that lets you do that on on, on GPU virtualized right. GPU. Is 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 something that nobody's really done yet. Well, Nvidia has has is trying to do it, but uh, they're doing their own thing with it. Um, yeah. So so uh, it, smoke and mirrors. Really, yeah, really, and and the crux of their technology was video compression technology, low latency video compression technology, and ability to take that video data and do fun things with it. And if they had, you know, went not not just done gaming, but used that, you know, jumped into some type of YouTube video, Vimeo style competitor, some type of, uh, you know, live streaming, live streaming or video distribution, movie distribution service. Uh, there could have been a huge potential for that. Yeah. Um, so as it is right now, the service is still up. It hasn't gone away yet. It, uh, it sounds a little shady in how... Uh, the transition. Yeah, how all the employees were uh, laid off uh, and people who had paid money for stock, their stock is worth nothing. And the company was sold for, I think, $4 million uh, when there were tens and tens of millions of dollars invested into the company. And... Uh, and a competitor, uh, Gakai, was bought by Sony just months ago for three hundred eighty million dollars. Yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the, the thing, the thing that I, my hunch is, and this is speculation, uh, is that because they they had a, built a platform that they couldn't scale without adding one machine per user, they people who were looking at purchasing suddenly were no longer interested when they found that out. That is a that is a that is really really bad. There's yeah. some cool sounding ideas in there. It's really oh, neat. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tons of neat ideas. It doesn't sound like a, a viable business Big model. Booths, it packs, and GDC, and I think E3 too, right? Everywhere. Yeah. They're giving away those micro consoles by the end of OnLive, just desperate for people to oh, use man. it. 1,600 yeah. simultaneous users and current users is, is yeah. not real good. Yeah. Um, Sony announced a whole bunch of stuff today. Yes, they did. Um, Sony announced a 4K TV. Okay. Um, is it the 3D one? I, I don't know if it has 3D, but it is... is it the No Glasses 3D is the one that no, I was... No, it's not uh, the one we no, saw no, at no, CES. No, 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 no. no. Uh, a f- that was at... What was one no, of the, that, that was, was at NAB. What was one of the log, the log run? Oh, that's that was sharp. 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 That's an that 8K. Was an 8K TV. Oh, that's right. Well, that's, that's a little further in the future. <laughs> that was a TV with 16 HDMI cables plugged in. For one image, and I want, and there's only one camera in the world that shoots in 8K. There's probably more than that now. Maybe two cameras in the world that shoot in 8, 8K, and they're all in Japan. Couldn't you take like eight reds and make that work? You put them in a I big. Do not grid? think you could a, a grid, a grid of, of red sensors <laughs> yeah, and one not? big lens. Yeah, I, I don't think that's how cameras Makes work. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly if that is how a camera works. Um, so, so Sony announced an 84 inch 
8K, a 4K TV, uh, which I want very badly. It's a big TV. It's an LCD panel, um, and that's 3, 3840 by uh, 2160, so 2160p. That is enough. That is the same number of horizontal lines as there are vertical lines. No, more than that. Uh, not maybe not. nineteen twenty by ten eighty. It's almost double. Yeah, it's double then, resolution. It's four. It's four ten eighty p resolutions packed into one eighty four inch TV. Yes, and it's I guess they four. there is there is three D in that yeah. with three D glasses. Just about. Yeah. Um, but they demoed that, and there is no pricing or availability yet. It will be on sale later this year in North America. Ten grand. That's my guess. Select retail locations later this oh, wait, year. Oh no, Sony fifteen grand. Uh, which means I'm going to pay a visit to select retail locations. You're going to go to Sony year. style. Are there still Sony Sony style stores? I don't think so. Those are all gone. You know right? what I mean? Is Palo Alto maybe? There was the last one I know was like the Stanford Mall. There's a Sony, Sony store. Sony, Sony's oh, Sony yeah. style. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you could go see the Ibo. Did either of you ever use? Did you use an Ibo ever? Um, I never owned one. I've used one. We had one. Uh, Pet one. Logan called one in at Max PC one year, and um, it was real dumb, super duper dumb. I would want one right now. I would totally. What take is this one. word? What is this? It's a robot dog. Sony's yeah. robot. Oh. They had two versions. The second three versions. Ibo, three versions. Of the last Ibo they ever made was kind of cool. He could chase a pink ball or anything pink. Why pink? He was because that was the color. That was, he was the color recognized. To chase. Yeah. So if someone came in with a pink dress, they would. They would try to kill them. <laughs> it was a small bug with the software, but it all worked out in the end. <laughs> all right. Um. So, anything else interesting? They they announced so a 4K TV, which I will want to visit Best Buy or wherever it is, just to look at, You're just go. to appreciate, just to visualize the future. So you know? hold on, if you do that though, you know what's going to happen. What what's you're going to not ever want to watch your TV again? It's going to be inadequate and shit to you. No, it doesn't work that way because when I go to stores to look at TVs, I go up real close, and so the pixel density is higher, is lower at that range. Hmm. So I sit real close to it. I don't ever. There's no. Yeah, it, it, it it'll be fine. I, I'm pretty okay. Happy with my TV. You're comfortable. Um, less interesting. They announced a new tablet S. Um, with Android tablet. Three, huh? Android tablet. Um, running Android 4.0. Uh, really? Yeah. Ice cream sandwich. Yeah. You. Not not super interested in that. Um, how big? Do we uh, know capacity. No, no. How how is how big a screen? Is it seven inch or ten inch? Uh, I think it's ten inch. You. And W, yeah, yeah. Um, two things that are kind of interesting or interesting. One is they have now a GoPro competitor, so an action camera. It's it's actually called the Action Cam. What is it? I haven't heard about this. Is it yeah, Sony just now today. Um, and it actually looks a lot like the Contour camera we saw at Nab. That so Contour is the one that looks more like tubular. Yeah, it's it's just like a. It looks like, like the old cil- cylinder like a, with a. I, what is that shape? I it guess. looks like the original Apple Firewire cam. It looks like the Predator's gun. Yes, but what is that? There's, there's got to be a name for cylinder? that Cylinder? No, it's a cylinder, a long cylinder. If you stretch Oblong out a cylinder. cylinder? An ovoid? I don't know. There's, there's got to be pointy a geometric ends, or name. Is it no, no, no. Ends. Imagine, what is a cylinder combined with a, a rectangular cylinder? As if you took a cylinder and stretched it out. But I think a cylinder is a... like. A, Right, but if you stretch the circle, so it's not a circle, but so it's an oval. oh, like an elliptical oh, an cylinder. oval cylinder, an oval cylinder. Oh, cyl- Elliptic- cylinders are ovals. Elli- elliptical cylinder. <laughs> uh, it's an action cam, uh, which is cheaper than the GoPro, two hundred bucks as opposed to the two fifty to three hundred that GoPros go for now. Okay, um, and it's very comparable. You got ten eighty p. It goes up to one one twenty fps at seven twenty p. HDMI out. Comes with a waterproof casing. What is the frame? What can um, it do frame rate wise? Uh, I think it does 1080p at 60, okay. and it'll go down to uh, 720p 30 at 120. I think it will do 120. Yeah, uh, 120 FPS at 720p uh, for the high speed stuff. Okay, uh, slow motion stuff. So it's basically the same thing the GoPro does. Pretty much, except the GoPro. You know, GoPro always looks looks weird. It's lighter than the GoPro. Okay. Uh, GoPro is a weird shape because it's it's square. It's yeah. a box. It's, it's a, a boxy box. shape. And it's boxy because they want you to buy accessories, like you can buy the LCD to put in the back or the Wi-Fi backpack to put in the back. It's well, made and all the cases for accessories too. and and casing, it's of like course. Like semi-modular. Yeah, uh, these are less modular. Like the Contour is not very modular, and the Sony one isn't that modular. Uh, there are two models of the Sony. One has Wi-Fi, one doesn't. The Wi-Fi one lets you download an app and control it, like the Wi-Fi backpack does for the GoPro. It's seventy dollars more. Um, no mic in, line in. I don't know if people really need the line in. I guess for these cameras, because you're just gonna put some, you know. 
some Pearl Jam, I guess, yeah. with your video anyway. Well, and if right? you put it in a water, waterproof case or something, yeah, you, you have, have to the, hear it. The line yeah. in is useless because yeah. you can't plug it in. I, I've never used the the line in on the GoPros. It's, it's useful if you want to like live stream because you have HDMI out, and then you want if you want to attach to a, a mic. I don't know. Oh, that's a good. I point. would. You mean if you want to record? If you want to record? So like if we na- took out this, if we took if we the out the on this mixer into a quarter jack. Terrible idea. No, no, no I, I guess not live stream. But if you wanted to narrate your videos. Hi, I'm Will from Test. Have really good narration, like you, you could lav up. But or you would do that all. Yeah, I mean, I guess as a real, as like a portable time. microphone. Yeah, if you want, like, if you are snowboarding, and you are saying, "Oh my God, this is so cool," or narrating where you're going, you want to put narration over your Nickelback. Exactly. Oh. Uh, you, I want to just play Nickelback that over my Nickelback during the while recording the video. Um, I, I guess there are uses. Yes, I yeah. used the HDMI out with the 3D camera for what it's worth. There is HDMI out on this. With, with the, with I mean, not with the third person. There camera. is a mini HDMI. There out. is a mini HDMI out. Uses mini SD cards, um, and the pricing I think is the best thing about this is two hundred bucks. So these kind of action cameras. So it's a hundred bucks off the GoPro. Uh, way more affordable. We should do yeah. some side by sides. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. Yeah, right. some Contour GoPro and Sony action cam. That's coming out later this month in September. When is it? okay? And the most exciting thing from Sony today. You mean next month? It's August still. Oh, uh, it is. Later in August. The most exciting thing is the upgrade to the Sony NEX 5N, which is the Sony NEX 5R. Now, if anyone was looking to get a mirrorless camera uh, in the next two months, this is one potentially to def- uh, look at. Did I make a bad mistake buying a 5N in June? I, did you get use out of it? Did I you love get, my 5N. Did you get $100 worth of use, extra $100 worth of well, use out of it? Well, I couldn't buy the C3 when I, when I bought the 5N, so... Um, like if, neither the C three nor the If you the love F3. it, then there's no there's no reason. Then you didn't make a bad choice. What's the so upgrade? What does it do? Yeah. What's so, the camera? Uh, like I have the C three, an X C three, which came out last year, last August, and I love that. Super tiny. Uh, the five N came out at the same time, and the big difference between the five N and the C three was the five N does t- did ten eighty p video recording and also had a touch screen for touch touch to focus. Um, Neither of which I well I use the 1080p sometimes the touch to focus I never use because it's e- always easier to do the ring focus. And then this year Sony changed the C3 to the F3, which we did a review of, and that one was a little bigger, had the flip up screen, also did 1080p video, uh, and also had the built in flash, which I thought was stupid, uh, not useful. Uh, the five N repla- five R replaces the five N, but adds three things that make it actually a really cool upgrade. One, they added a, a manual control dial on the top. A rotating dial. Oh, so there's two. There's, there's two, two dials, dials now. now. In the back, oh. the previously the C3 and the 5N and the F3 have like that ring in the back where you do the settings on. Usually, if you're in aperture mode, that sets your iris, right? Your F value, or if you're in shutter priority, that sets your shutter. So it's your your fine tuned control. But so you can have you to do get, both at the same time now. So now you have two dials. But so on the on the the old camera, you have to go into like a digital like a digital menu, right? No, in the old camera, if you want to change ISO exposure, you go, you click a sh- shortcut, and then you still rotate the dial. Right. So for now example, now you have two dials. But is the dial like on 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 like old older style cameras where it actually has clicks? Yeah, the there's clicks no clicks. In, okay, no. so it, it still it, goes it into is, the digital there are clicks menu. On, no, there are clicks no, on the, the the dials in the new five R. The new top dial is the same style dial in the NEX seven. Which had two dials on top, and they are non-clicky. They are just oh. smooth dials because it's digital, um, and they're not no hard stops. They just go all the way around. But they're programmable with the function key, so you can program one dial to change ISO and one dial to change uh, aperture if you want. Uh, I think that's extremely useful. A physical addition. The second thing they added was uh, they changed the sensor. So even though it's still a 16 megapixel sensor, they added a phase detection focus autofocus. So uh, in all of Sony's previous mirrorless cameras and many other mirrorless cameras, it's all contrast-based focus, autofocus, which means the camera kind of refocuses real fast. You know when you hold the camera shutter button halfway down before you get the green beep beeps and the, and the focus points, it kind of like moves back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Like the focus moves back and forth. That's because it's taking images and then processing it and then trying to find the edges of the image to find the, uh, the edge of tech. So that's why you have the peaking. Right, the, the peaking outlines. Um, Contrast-based auto tech is in the sensor where it takes it t- takes uh, two sensor inputs, so you hit light from two slightly different angles through the lens, so they're slightly out of phase, and they compare those images uh, to see what is in focus and what isn't. Um, so, it, so it looks at like adjoining pixels on the sensor. 
Uh, yes. It's, uh, no, it's within one pixel on the sensor. There, you, you can detect two different parts. So there's the really scary math involved here. Really scary math, oh. but it's much faster than contrast detect. Hmm. Uh, auto def- uh, autofocus. And the advantage of phase detect is that you can actually... You're saying get, phase detect, right? It's phase detection, okay. autofocus. The advantage of that is that you can do autofocus while shooting a video, and it's much faster for burst shooting. Uh, and this is new for Sony's mirrorless cameras. It's on like some of... Olymp- I think Olympus has it, and I want to say uh, Fuji has it maybe on some of their mirrorless cameras. Uh, but it's something that's typically reserved for the higher end camera. So this is actually really good. You get faster focus, which is good all around. And then also they added apps on uh, app support with Wi-Fi. So the 5R has Wi-Fi built in. Ooh. And you can download Sony design apps. So there's no SDK out right now. But these apps are not mandatory at all. So if you wanted to go into the menu, you can, there's a new shortcut that says applications. You click it, and then there are applications like you know, I'll help you take a time lapse. Here, you know, here are your settings. Set your settings here. Click start. And oh, that's time really lapse cool. Will happen. Hmm. Or bracketing, or if you want to do like photo filter stuff, they also have that. Can you write your own apps? You cannot write your own apps. Oh, so it's only Sony apps. It's only Sony apps for now. Hmm. Is, does it run an, an OS or something? It does not run an OS. It does not run Android, okay. thankfully. Hmm. Interesting. Both Nikon and Samsung had announced cameras uh, in the, the week, this past week, that run Android. And I think that's stupid. Is it? Um, is it? Is it bigger? Like the? F- it F3? is three. Same size as the five N. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so that's good. Uh, let's see. Samsung announced a ton of stuff too. I haven't had a chance to go down this list yet. The couple of things I noticed though were that the Galaxy Note two is coming by the end of this year, and it's going to be even bigger. Five point five inches. That's crazy. Five point five inches. Is that a phone or a tablet? It's phone, tablet. It's Galaxy Note. I don't, I don't understand. What kind of pockets do you have to have to fit a 5.5? Do you remember when we were at CES and I took that Galaxy Note off of the stand and the PR woman started completely freaking out because it had the little, it had the wire attached to it and I was trying to put it in my pocket and she started yeah. yelling. Mm-hmm. It is. That was really it's uncomfortable. A tablet. It's not a phone. It's a tablet. But it has a phone it's in a it, right? It's a small tablet with a stylus. They bumped up the processor 1.4 to 1.6 gigahertz. You know, 2 gigs of RAM to 1 gig of RAM. Do you have to buy it from AT&T or Verizon? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, so it's no cellular uh, modem now? I, no, no, there's there's definitely a cellular modem. I'm not, I'm not sure who the, the partners are. It's not available in the U.S. It's uh, It was very popular. The first Galaxy Note, just to be clear, the first, even though I kind of think it's dumb, the first a Galaxy lot of people Note, really yeah. like the first oh, Galaxy yeah. Note. Yeah. You got some people, crazy hair there. People want the stylus Video to, viewers. to take notes. Uh, on their tablets. Yeah. Gina's really excited. She like she's wanted one since day one. So I just said no. This is just a tablet for writing things? It, it has a st- pen. It has a stylus. No carrier announcements yet, but they expect uh, both HSPA Plus and LTE mm. models. Okay. Great. Good news, everyone. Um, a bunch of other Samsung stuff was announced. I'm not going to go down it. Oh, uh, one last thing at the Sony 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 talk. They said that they're backing away from the split screen tablets because people didn't like them. You know the folding the folding tablet. I can't, oh yeah, the, the DS no tablet. surprise. Yeah, no. Yeah, no thanks. Um, anything else from the Samsung thing you want to hit, Norm? Before I move on, not really. Uh, they announced that Galaxy phone uh, or Galaxy uh, camera. So it runs Android. It really looks like a point and shoot that has Android in the back, and it ha- again has like a, some type of home Does screen. Do they do cameras in other markets, and I just didn't know about it, or is this their first point and shoot camera? Samsung. Yeah. No, of course they have tons of cameras. They do cameras. Yeah. Samsung has tons of cameras. I don't really pay attention to cameras. Is it mostly point and shoot? No, they have a mirrorless camera. And, and, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, President Obama did an AMA today. Coincidentally, it's election season. Yeah. Uh, did you, any, did, I wasn't able to get into Reddit to see what the AMA was about, but it had like 12,000 comments the last time I looked, which is, it seems like a lot. I, I don't think it had that many comments, but uh, he, Anthony answered maybe a dozen questions at most, including... Who was his favorite basketball player? Who was his favorite basketball player? Michael Jordan. He's a Bulls fan. Wow. What does the 16,011 like? comments right now? What he's he was 15,000 upvotes. That is a lot of upvotes. Hmm. Yeah. Good, good karma day. The me. worst thing was that his verification photo was just him sitting on a computer. <laughs> it would look like just a bad photo of Obama sitting on a computer. Did he, but he wasn't holding up he, a little he sign wasn't even or anything. Looking at the camera. 
not even looking or smiling at the camera. Did he? Him pensive at a computer. Did he have the president? No sign that said, hi, Reddit, I am President Obama. Did he have the, the He cup? made one president, one Reddit joke. Which one was, was it? Like, what do, here, and what do I think about this Reddit? Not bad. Which was oh really? Which is the Obama not bad from the from the British visit or yeah. whatever? Yeah. Hmm. He got so a I guess lot of I guess that that's worth it. And that meme now has come to an end when Obama addresses his uses his own meme on Reddit in a AMA to for a presidential <laughs> the snake has eaten campaign. The Orosboros has completed, and uh, it is almost as bad as when uh, on the Macy's Day. Thanksgiving or New Year's Day parade. Oh, no, no, it was Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Macy's Day parade when, uh, when, uh, uh, what's his name? Seen it. I'm so glad I don't know. Rick Rick Springfield. Nope. No, 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 no. Never. Oh, I'm so glad I don't want to. Rick rolled. Let you down. What's his name? Never going to. Rick. You've just been Rick rolled. Perry. No. Rick Perry is a politician. No, 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 no. No, don't Google that. Um, it is uh, uh, Rick Springfield is Jesse's girl, right? Rick Springfield, Jesse's girl. When what? Okay, when we, when did today show Rick rolled everyone? Uh, it wasn't the Today Show. It was it or, was the new the Macy's Day Parade. Yeah, I came across a YouTube video that was that was a Rick roll. In the, Rick Astley. I God damn it! Now he's back. He's relevant again. Never gonna <laughs> give you up. That one. Yeah. So the, yeah. Obama doing a Reddit, uh, Emma. Was, maybe was that maybe that's his way of saying hey i'm tired of this meme you guys should drop this shit now <laughs> yeah be more innovative um somebody said uh uh the, the, the anyway yeah i just think it's really funny that when you go to his profile page on reddit it says by president obama a month of reddit gold <laughs> <laughs> that's super weird and also he has reddit gold so i guess somebody did buy him reddit gold um yeah so that's weird uh, he, I'm looking at the questions he answered. It's working again. Uh, there's a fair number of serious things about like recent graduates from college. You should just go to the site. It's on the top of Reddit. It'll be there for probably a week at the, if I had to guess. Um, I just, I don't like how it's kind of pandering. It, well, I don't like that. I, I like I like Reddit Amas and uh, the people who are sincere, like Terry Crews did an Amma last night, and it was yeah, it was fantastic, awesome. And Tara Cruz had inspirational messages and could tell that, you know, I mean, you don't know, obviously, whether it's him or a PR person, but it felt genuine and it was funny. And he talked about all his roles and how he got started. And I feel like a lot of people do it right and a lot of people do it wrong and use it for publicity. And this, and to be fair, the Tara Cruz one was also to promote his new Old Spice ad. Um, but didn't he also <laughs> announce a, a, a follow up to his role in uh, um, Idiocracy? No. Was that not part of that? There was no announcement. Oh, Sylvester Stallone does a lot of these. Sylvester Stallone is there, very other people. He's so he's really good friends with Harry Knowles, and so he'll like talk to Harry on the phone and and Harry relay messages. Mm. So Sylvester Stallone just called me and told me, "Don't worry, Expendables Two will be rated R." Good news, everyone. Yeah. He's... Um. Yeah, but when it's when it's like the Woody Harrelson one is the is the high water mark for for AMA fails, right? Yes. Yes. I will be here for fifteen minutes. When, when ask me from anything, three p.m. Really means Ask me the questions I want to answer. My PR person wants me to answer. Right. And you know, for the for Obama, the it's can be all vetted by PR people, there, there's, and, I, and writers. It's got to be like Veep, right? There's a whole team of experts standing around him. There should with be the a Veep episode where Selena, Vice President Selena, tries to oh, uh, Selena Myers tries to do a Reddit AMA and then does not get enough questions, and maybe one of her uh, subordinates <laughs> has to ask a fake question, create a Reddit account, and gets caught. I'm giving you ideas. <laughs> Veep. More scripts. What is this Veep? What are we talking about? You don't about? watch Veep? Oh, Veep is an HBO show. It's oh. Julie Louis Schreiber. Oh. It's Elaine. She plays the vice president of the United States. She's she, she, vice president who is the Elaine. Most ineffectual job uh, in America, basically. And but it's scary how realistic the the show makes Terrifying. politics seem. Um and it's hilarious. It, it's a spin off kind of a spin off of uh the British show um Thick of It. The Thick of It. Huh. Maybe I'll watch it. It's, it's so, about po uh, powerful people really have no power. I'm glad that the president didn't spend, didn't spend six hours answering AMA questions. That would make me think he's probably not using his time very wisely. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see like his photo should have been like five five phones 
and like you know people handing with documents and like like the uh the the what you call it the situation room wall behind him and, and like big, you can't show people the big board and, and 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 basketballs and all sorts of stuff and just signing and I think and, I kind of like that I mean, pensive <laughs> photo. Yeah, they need to just widen way out on it. So it's just him in the corner with the computer, oh, with a oh. big computer. empty room. Just, I, okay. Why wasn't he in the like? Do you think he doesn't like work in the? He, oval no, no, he was tra- he's traveling. He's on the campaign trail. Oh, he's on the campaign. Okay, that makes sense. This is all part of the campaign. Hey, you have twenty minutes. Do an AMA. Boom. Exactly. Most popular AMA ever. He, look, he, he looks like he just woke up from a nap. <laughs> hey, it's time for the AMA. I don't think presidents I don't can know nap. What that is. I don't think that's something you can do. I want do. to see Romney do an AMA. <laughs> do you know that the, the, there's a there, he has a bedroom in the front of Air Force One in the nose? In the mm. nose? Yeah, that's where Wait, his bedroom. That sounds like a really bad place for a bedroom. If, if the, if that's the all Air Force the communication One, equipment. If Air Force One crashes, it doesn't matter where the survivable zones are. It's not about crashing. The nose is where you put the communications equipment, though. It's seven forty-seven. It's two layers. It's two floors. So you're talking about this? The, I'm not talking floor? about the cockpit. I'm talking about underneath the cockpit. <laughs> His bed is just in the cockpit. Yeah, he just goes up there. Hey, Bill, how's it going? Ah, we're about thirty-five thousand feet. Is, six the bedroom six is hours not out in in the nose. Someone, someone, confirm this. It's what I've please. always been told. This is the. I, I do not I'm, believe. I'm wait. immediately backpedaling. I do not believe it. Air Force One. Is the president's airplane? Yeah, I know that, but it's a uh, also a fine Harrison Ford movie, Wolfgang Peterson, I believe. That movie isn't bad. It's not bad. You're correct. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Air Force One is. Uh, oh, never mind. I thought I, I thought I knew more about Air Force One, but I was gonna say some things. It's a seven forty. Get off my plane. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the video? I'm the president of the United States. Clap, 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 clap. Cheers. He's live. Did you uh, did you see the video of that guy who took the first class flight on the Emirates Airlines seven eighty seven, and took a shower at forty thousand feet? If you buy a first class ticket and have a private cabin with a little lid that goes over it, the Dreamliner, uh, se- uh, no Air Force A three eighty, Airbus A three eighty. Oh, not not seven eighty seven. Did I say seven eighty seven? Yeah, I meant the A three eighty. Sorry, okay. uh, it's another double decker. So he got on the, the he, he videoed his whole first class experience. I would do that. Yeah, of course. I would totally do that. You're not allowed to use electronics in the air. He didn't give <laughs> When you fly first class on Emirates, you don't give a fuck. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, fair enough. You can take a shower on the airplane. So he went up and there's like a whole little bathroom that's like wide and long. So there's and a there's a water reservoir being heated just for shower. Because you know when you go in an airplane bathroom, the, the water is a stingy. They give you no water in that sink. Yeah, you press the button drips. two seconds. You're like, oh, I gotta wash my hands. Oh, oh it's so gross. Nothing. Yeah. And, and yet, enough for a shower. So, do you think his water gets passed down, chilled, and then put into the regular bathrooms? No. 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 Gray water gets uh, goes into a special tank. So, it's a lot of gray water. So, it, well, it didn't look like a real high flow shower for what it's worth. He had video of him inside the shower. It's definitely, it was on Laughing Squid or Cocky or something yesterday. Um, is there a time limit for the shower? Yeah, so that's the thing is when you're in the shower and the water's running, there's a little countdown and it's like you are 100%, you are 375%. Oh, wow, shower gauge. You are 50%. Water gauge. You and then when you got to the red, the it, yeah, you had to you had to stop. So soap, get your soap done or not. I don't think people really understand how much water they use when they shower. It is a lot of fucking I think, water. Well, I think all on, showers have a gauge yeah. of some sort. <laughs> I, I, like, I want gauges everywhere for water because the amount of water that goes through houses and stuff it's a lot. I had a water leak last month. I it, I I opened the water bill, and I was like, "What? Oh, geez. What? How much is your water bill? Four hundred and fifty dollars. Oh it's more than my water bill, and six people live in my house. Yeah. Well, so th- there was a wow. leak. We they came and fixed it, but mistakes were made. But you know, they took the money. They took it off. They didn't charge me for the sewer part of the water leak because it water didn't go into. How the How they sewer. differentiate? What do you mean? Well, they don't measure sewer outflow. They just assume it's a certain percentage of the water you use. Oh, a certain percentage. Yeah. So, um, but but they looked at my just what my normal bill was, and we're like, "No, you're cool. Here <laughs> you go. Here's a hundred bucks back." Nice of them. That was nice. I thought, yeah. Um, but you should watch that video. It's pretty cool. I didn't think it was like right to put on tested. It seemed weird to put on tested. Also, the guy is super super lame. Um. Is he just is he is he douchey? What is he? He's pretty douchey. Yeah, I mean he's the kind of dude that would take a first class flight and then. <laughs> How much did that flight cost? Uh, it was from Hong Kong to um, no, it's from I want to say it was from Thailand to Hong Kong. It was like a three hour. If flight. you're gonna do that, you gotta plan the flight so it's making the most out of your ability to shower. So you don't shower out of you know. Yeah, it was if a, you are a morning shower person, you want to take a flight where you shower. You, you're maybe like a. Uh, 
uh, uh, uh, a red, red eye, eye red and then so you wake up and you take a shower and then get off the plane. That's great because the first thing I want to do when I get off the plane is take a, take a shower. Yeah, hose off. I feel gross on the plane. I think I'd still logistics. feel gross taking a airplane shower. So the, the towels. I mean, this this was a flight that was short enough that the flight attendant was obviously annoyed that he was taking a shower on the plane. Because I'm sure it's a lot of work for the flight attendants too. Oh yeah, is there cleanup? Uh, I, I'm sure somebody has to go and squeegee it off. Yeah, mm. if you're flying, if you're paying that much money for an airplane ticket, you don't squeegee it yourself. Mm. Um, but like the the the, the one of the flight attendants was tucked glass, him in glass doors or. He had a camera out and was holding it out at arm's length as he was showering, keeping it so out. So cur- it's a curtain or a glass door? Glass door on the wow. shower. But the whole bathroom was like a closed. It was like a. It was bigger than a cruise ship bathroom. If you've ever been wow. on a cruise ship, Those it was bigger than small. that. It was bigger than a big cruise ship bathroom. Okay. Yeah, like in a fancy cabin. So um, yeah, that was really weird. And he showed what the what the people in the back. He like walked through their cabins too, just to show you what he was getting versus what the chugs were getting. <laughs> I can't what? sleep on cruise ships. Really? I cannot see. I see like a baby. The rocking. Mm-hmm. Uh, just yeah. Me yeah I feel like I'm missing out on something. Something's happening. What, what There's always of, something happening. What kind on the of cruise ships. ships are you talking about? Are you talking about like a booze cruise or like an old person cruise? Because no, they're two distinctly different categories. There's always something happening on a cruise. Or you mean like your your you you have, you have uh, I have cruising. What's I have that like, anxiety called where you feel like you're always missing out on something? Yeah. Norm always has that. You have to go. I'm mean, on an airplane and sleep like a baby because I'm not missing out on anything. <laughs> There's nothing going on in the airplane. Somebody's watching John Carter of Mars. You could be watching John Carter. But on the, on, on the, on the cruise ship, it's like, oh, it's activity going on. What's happening in the ballroom right now? What's buffets going on? Oh, it's the food. I yeah. always gain 10 pounds and these things. Gina and I went on an old person cruise once for her job. And it was like 500 people on this ship. And it was a kind of big ship. But it was a lot of like, like there would, you would frequently go someplace and there would be like somebody that was wheeled there in a wheelchair. And they'd say, oh, that's Mr. Johnson. He, he just lives on the ship now. And it was like retirees who had a shitload of money and were instead of living in a retirement home someplace, basically just brought somebody on the cruise ship with them and they'd go around the world. Huh. Different port every day. It so Air Force crazy. One yeah. has uh, the bedroom potentially is in the nose. Did you confirm this? We are, no, I don't, oh. I'm asking someone out there. We don't know where the bedroom is and what the amenities are like on Air Force One. We know there's a boardroom. I think I probably learned this from uh, 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 reading Tom Clancy novels when I was in high school. So, you know, I may be completely wrong. I'm opening up. Oh, man, there's too much stuff in there. Okay, well, we'll find out next week and revisit the Is Air Is there Force two Air Force ones? Yes. One's fake? No. They they cycle so that if one has maintenance problems or whatever, I think there might even be three. But they they both don't fly at the same time? Air Force One is just the code name for whichever plane has the president on it. But I heard that As they fly recall, identical. I don't know where I heard this. It could be a dream. But I, there's some like the two planes fly and they're identical. So you don't know which one the, pre- the president's on. I don't know if that's true We're or not. We're going to attack. That doesn't seem true. Very much like Dark Knight Rises. One has, one has the nuke. One doesn't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you need, yeah. Fake convoy. I don't think, th- I don't, th- I don't, th- I think that they just defend the airspace around Air Force One okay. pretty aggressively. I don't know for sure. Hmm. Seems like they use security through obscurity for Air Force One a lot, except for the fact that it has the giant Air Force One painted on the side. United States of America. Um... A lot of people in Air Force One at all times. A lot of the press corps. Yeah. Photographers. A bunch of Air Force dudes. Yeah. And ladies. People. It's full of people, man. Just like anything else, man. <laughs> Air Force One. It's people all the way in there. Um, Kepler. Do you guys know about Kepler? Mm-hmm. Telescope. He's Johannes a- Kepler uh, was a, uh, a astronomer, astrologist, physicist back in the days when those things were all kind of the same. Uh, and he described the motion of the planets. You know, that they basically were orbiting each other and came up with some formulas and stuff like that. There's a telescope named after him, and its purpose is to find extrasolar planets, so planets outside of our solar system. Uh, until, like, the mid-'90s, we didn't think there were any, or we hadn't been able to detect them. Uh, but it, it's a, I was reading about it today because they discovered a, um, a new... They discovered a planet in some place we've never seen planets before. Uh, in a circumbinary planetary system. What does that mean? It means... Sounds something like ritualistic. And <laughs> so it means that, that there's a two... And, ba- and barbaric. Two, well, why would you impose that on the stars? Perverse, Norm. Uh, two suns. But there are so many. In a, in a solar system. So instead of having one sun like we have, there'd be a second sun. What is... Okay. And they'd probably be orbiting each other, kind of. So like they typically in binary solar systems either... Uh, when there's two stars, either one of the suns 
is really, really, really huge compared to the other one. So it kind of orbit the second one orbits it kind of with a little mm. bit of wobble or they're close to the same size and they orbit a central point in space. So they orbit nothing basically mm. That's the best. space in the middle. Mm. They found evidence of that. Well, no, no. So then they found, uh, so we found planet, a, a single planet uh, orbiting a binary solar system before. So that means one planet, then usually they're really large gas giants kind of far away from the sun, incapable of supporting the kind of life that we understand that exists here on earth. So, the goal of Kepler is to find extrasolar planets that are Earth uh, from a half a size of Earth to two Earth sizes, I think. But it's uh, so much easier to find planets that are huge. Massive. Yeah. Because they, they distort the light coming from the stars they orbit. Well, there's a bunch of different ways to find them. Yes. Um, but yeah, they want to find the they want to find the they want to find them that are in the range a distance from the sun that would be habitable uh, because water would be melted, liquid form. So between uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit and 212 degrees Fahrenheit, zero and 100 Celsius. They found a system now that has two planets orbiting a binary solar system. So it shows a circumbinary planetary system. What that means is that basically those kinds of planets can form, those kinds of solar systems can form accretion disks, which allow planets as we understand them to grow in a normal way. And the potential for Earth-like planets to be around those types of sol- uh, solar systems as well as those types of star systems as well is out there, which we didn't really know before. Basically, they want to find Tatooine. The, yeah, Tatooine is what they discovered, except for it was probably probably a gas giant. I don't know for sure. Maybe one is a gas giant, one's a giant ball of ice. I want to find a sand giant. I wish we had a sand giant. Um, the yeah. way this thing works is really interesting. I'm writing it up. I, I was midway through writing it up when we when we started doing the podcast, so I'll probably post that tomorrow. Um, but it's it's a really it's not a typical telescope. It looks like a normal telescope. The 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 satellite, you know, like a reflector with the light comes in one side, it reflects off a mirror in the back that's curved and focuses on a point in the center. Um, that part's normal, but the thing that's weird is it just aims at one spot in space, and it's relatively wide field, and it's looking at the same hundred thousand or so stars over the entire life of its of this this particular satellite's existence. Uh, and it's looking for f- f- tiny, tiny differences in brightness that will indicate planets going across between that sun and us. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Because the way they typically done this was using gravitational lensing or something like that to kind of see wobble or, or weird gravitational anomalies. And, and this is a whole new thing that I didn't kind of, I didn't really pay attention so to. So they're just waiting for one little pixel to blacken out and then come back. It's not even blacking out. It's just get slightly dimmer. Yeah. So the pixels, the sensors on the on the um, there's a, a massive array of sensors inside the telescope, and each of the sensors is relatively dense. It's like twenty two hundred. Uh, I, I can't. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not even gonna say because I'll fuck it up. But it's it's they're both they're pretty high resolution sensors, and they're tuned in a specific way to kind of let the stars bloom so that they get more information for each star. Hmm. Um, and it's all it's it's in an orbit that's behind the Earth, so it's not orbiting Earth; it's orbiting the Sun, kind of behind us, further back in our orbit. Uh, and it just stays in the same place, aimed at the same thing all the time, or it stays in the same orientation, aimed at the same place all the time. It's really neat. Um, How's Curiosity doing? It's driving. They're they're going toward the uh, Bradbury Heights. Bradbury. Bradbury. They Bradbury. named something after Bradbury. <laughs> they named something after Ray Bradbury. Oh, yeah. Bradbury Heights, good a fine place to live. Yeah, it good seems place to raise your family. <laughs> exactly, schools are okay. <laughs> Martians. Um, Windows Phone Eight announcement. Well, rumor, rumored announcement. It's going to be released theoretically on October 29th, three days after Windows Eight. Why don't they call that Windows Computer Eight or Windows Tablet Eight if they're going to keep calling Windows Phone Eight Windows Phone Eight? People can't see shrugs on an audio podcast, Chan. <laughs> um, the the device that they showed off, Samsung showed off today, is the Samsung ATIV Ativ S. It's Vita backwards. Is that it? Is that why they called no, it that? It's a terrible know. name. I don't know why. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of specs and stuff. It's all, I mean, we'll see what happens when the phones come out. Uh, more on that as it's not a uh, rumor anymore. Uh, but yeah, it's dual shaping co- up to be an exciting fall. But it's, I mean, it's a, it's by modern Android standards. We all know that this doesn't really matter when you're comparing across OSs. Uh, it's a dual core phone. The this phone Samsung announced is dual core, the Super HD AMOLED screen. Um, 
you know, a pretty standard hardware for mid last year. We are the Android life definitely cycle. reaching a critical mass for uh, an inflection point for where po- phone technology matters. The hardware matters. Like you think it does? I, I, or does oh, it you think anymore? it doesn't? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would argue that we've been there for for a little while. No, I think we can use like I think one gig of RAM, and at you know whatever a gigahertz processor, one point five gigahertz processor, we're fine. It's amazing because it's all bad battery life. It took twenty years to reach that point with PCs, and yeah. and now we're three years, three years into smartphones. So yeah, well, five years into smartphones, but really three years. Or, I mean, two thousand seven. Three G was the real. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Bill Nye, the science guy, says that denying evolution is bad for America. I posted a video about this on Friday. It was very controversial. And there was a, mm. I, I just wanted to say I was really proud of everybody because I thought it was a, a, for a highly charged political topic. Uh, people handled themselves very Bill responsibly Nye united in the everyone. comments. No, no, Bill Nye didn't unite everyone. <laughs> That is definitely not true. You just encourage some good dialogue, some good discussion. People on, I looked at the comments for this this video on other sites, and I was really proud of our community. So whether you agree or disagree with Bill Nye, I personally think that that he is right. That denying science is a bad idea for um, uh, youth in America. But yeah, I think it was. I, the, you guys were very good. I'm proud of you. So yeah. Uh, Nerdy Derby, unless anybody has anything to add. I think um, I heard this interview, or there was an interview uh, on, I guess it was both on Fresh Air and on... Uh, Say it right. Fresh Air. Thank you. And on Talk on the Nation last week uh, with a, a neurocognitive scientist who wrote a book about the brain um, and the, the just like consciousness and stuff and always the questions interviews with those guys always boil down to you know are you like Descartes or are you are you you know do you believe you know are, are you an atheist and free will or determinism and, and, you know are, are, what are your thoughts on creationism and stuff like that and this guy made a really good point I forget his name it's that so, the point of science is just you should not you should not dismiss anything and there's no such thing as scientific fact there's only the current best scientific theory. Uh, and well, everything, but- everything is theory until it is disproven. And there is the best theory with lots of evidence to support it, supporting it, but which does not mean that later on that can be refuted. And scientists should always strive to be open-minded and explore options. I mean, um, what's this guy? Francis Crick, the, the DNA guy? Yeah. They were, they, they, he, you know, as biologists, speculated on the idea that maybe, you know, human life was seeded by asteroids, could possibly, and entertained that idea and, and investigated it and was laughed, you know, almost out of his, uh, his the, the, that business. Well, there's a long history of scientific, uh, of scientists whose ideas were unpopular, went against the common, the, the, the common wisdom for the time that were run out of town on rails. I mean, Galileo, and if, if, starting with Galileo. I mean, it, it's 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 that's not an uncommon he was banned from a city. Well, yeah, I mean, he was going to be excommunicated by the church and all sorts of bad things. I don't remember, was that was that about was that for saying that the sun was the center of the solar system and not the not the earth was the center of the universe? I can't remember everything orbited around the earth. Yeah, I believe that's right, but I, think, I could be wrong. I think my science history is I didn't think we were going to talk about this, but um, yeah, it, it's um, it, it, but. You, so my fundamental, the thing I've always said is that science isn't something you should believe in. Science isn't something that requires faith. All science is, is saying, hey, we're going, it's a systematic way to look at evidence and use that evidence to explain natural phenomena, right? It's really straightforward. At this point in time, the best explanation we have for the way things became is that at the beginning of the universe, some stuff exploded Things came out of nothing. Other dimensions maybe were involved. We don't know what happened before Planck time, and it's unlikely that we will give if our understanding of things as they are now doesn't change. Um, you want to live forever? No. No, I really don't. I do. <laughs> You're about to hit a real There's also an interesting here, uh, discussion on, on the radio about living forever and what the, uh, the expected lifespan of our generation. What is the expected life? When I say our generation, generation, I mean people right now under 30. Oh, uh, <laughs> I have two more days of that. Yeah. Um, what about people slightly over 30? Well, oh, I'm halfway done, aren't I? 
Uh, and it's all downhill. A lot, lot of research indicates that indicates that uh, if the trend of growing lifespans continues, we will be, uh, you know, average lifespan will reach e- uh, 100 soon. So you like green as people then? Uh, just in advances in uh, nutrition and um, and Heart cybernetics care. and yeah. cybernetics. Yeah, exactly. Um, old Robo Joey. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. There's the matter of you know how long do people actually want to live, and whether there is mental capacity to to live that long. Well, you know it's interesting you say the mental capacity thing. There was a study uh, last week that uh, basically they've figured out the brain plaque problem. What, what what, the, what's what causing it? the brain plaque? What is brain plaque? Um, it has to do with the cerebro. What's the system that controls the cerebrospinal fluid and all that? It's basically you know, your your brain the is cerebellum. The cerebral highway. No, <laughs> I'm gonna. That's the name the, of the podcast. The, though. Medulla oblongata. Yeah, uh, um. uh, basically, you're, there's a blood-brain barrier, right? So there's no blood in your brain. Yes. The blood flows through into a system, and that system transfers nutrients and stuff like that to the neurons. And part of that system's job is to clean the outside of neurons, for lack of a better term. Uh, one of the things that they found in elderly people with dementia and uh, Alzheimer's and th- that type of degenerative brain disease is that they typically have plaque, a plaque buildup on the outside of axons of neurons. Really gross. Gross. Super gross. Uh, so you have to brush your brain, kids. Um, Fluoride. Yeah, the, the precious bodily fluids. Uh, but what happens is, as you grow older, they've discovered what they think is probably the mechanism that causes the plaque cleaning to slow down and fail, which is uh, p- posed as the the cause of one of the potential causative agents of a lot of degenerative brain diseases. Mm. Mm-hmm. So fix that mechanism. So live forever as a brain, I mean, Futurama becomes a reality. You just got to get in the plaque cleaning jar. Um, the, the, the problem with a lot of the stuff is we're talking about incredibly complex systems, biological systems, and it's stuff that we don't really understand fully at all. So it's, it's, I, it's always, you should always hesitate to believe when people say, Oh yeah, there's one, causative agent one easy solution you don't want to freeze yourself for something like that no i mean whatever did you read transmetropolitan man i don't want to freeze myself that is a terrible idea mm-hmm. you're going to come out of the freezer completely unable to cope with society oh i, I want to experience that that would be fun yeah no <laughs> do you if think you, those people had fun you you only freeze yourself when you're dead anyway so i'd rather the choice is death okay fair enough or death and then coming back death or to, other or or bewildered you know life I want to be Stallone in Devil Man. I want to come out and see seashells and oh my god. See, oh, let's make a pact. No matter, we only have to be defrozen at the same time. Same. Thaw me out. Three thousand eleven. Within two years of each other. No, same day. Everybody gets thawed same at the same day. day. I want like a two month. Like I want one person to be like, dude, cryo freeze. Come pack. check this out. Maybe we... it's that every hundred years, one person gets unfrozen and has to make the decision whether everybody else gets unfrozen. That's mm. the pact. No. This is a movie. No. Yeah, so f- you get first dibs, Chan. What? So you 3, get 100, unfrozen, 2100, 2100. You get to scope out and find out if and you're like, it's you, worth waking us yeah. up. So you had to wait, wait five years and find... So you, you don't have to wait five years. In time. Yeah. You, you can only go forward 100 years in time. And you got to... Well, there needs to be rules. You're so out for three months. Three months at the end of to three gauge months. the quality of... So yeah. if natural expected lifetime... So if you're dead, let's say... To play, play it safe, you want to freeze yourself about 20 years before, let's say 10 years. 10 years before, is a long time. 10 years before your, your natural lifespan ends. What are they, like 60, 70? No, no. Like Norm's s- thinking 80. this is 90. Yeah. S- s- 85. Okay. You want, to free, you, you want to give yourself a good 10 years you want of to, fun. You want I, to freeze before senescence, but after you've done everything you want to do. Sure. So you say, let's say you have an extra 20 years of active life in whatever perfect future that you end up staying unfrozen in. So if you have that 20 years and you got to spend three months investigating and you're in a, in a cycle, you're only going to get, what, 20, 60, 180 centuries of possibility. But by okay. three people, divide by three. No, it's, that's, that's times three. That's already three. But you've, you've got to figure that at some point there's going to be medical advances that expand that range mm-hmm. beyond whatever. I guess that's... Uh, Are you an optimist, Norm? 180 centuries is good enough. See what you're thinking when you, years. What okay. you're thinking is when you were thinking about the transmetropolitan scenario, where you come out of the freezer completely unable to to deal with the the depravity of modern civilization, is that you'll be the one that can buck that trend. You can handle it, of course. Of course, that's not true. 
<laughs> of course. I guess relearning the language might be difficult. It's all going to be just uh, battered up English. By <laughs> Hold on, Babelfish. Boom, right in the ear. Um, so, yeah. How do you get on? Uh, what, what job would you want in the future? Let's just say 150 years in the future. If you woke up, if you had to go through, if you had to go under cryo sleep now and woke up 150 years, it's, it's got to be something. And, like there, and there was civilization. Physical. There's there, civilization. What would your ideal job be? Museum curator? Well, see, like maybe something really that has to do with my this. time, like right? Playwright? But you couldn't do anything creative, uh, like, a, or not creative, but in, you in couldn't terms be a teacher. of, like, like, you couldn't be a teacher or, you know, ed- editorial Teach people. History. Like, you're, you're too Columnist? far disconnected. <laughs> Columnist? But who would be your audience? Like, the, other, the, the other dudes freezers. who are fascinated with... With you the, being the, the, outside No, no, of fascinated your... with a his, like the guy who's, like, I think 150 years... If So a column is covering your own time. No. Almost like a historian. Yeah, <laughs> historian. Yeah. Here's here's what you do. You get to rewrite or as you'd call it, Wednesday. Like last Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. You, you... Obama did a Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Obama? You do, uh, you do... You look at all the art that's been lost and then just recreate it as best you can. No, but you have to have skill for that. It's not how that works. I bet you could probably jam. I mean, you'd, you'd interpret a Campbell inter- soup can. You would be a fact checker for movies, for their movies. Oh, oh like the yeah. science expert? That yeah, they like call that him? t-shirt is really wrong. Yeah. That band, it, Nobody, was, it, was, called, it was called the National, not the Republic. <laughs> Nobody would be wearing a Lincoln Park t-shirt in 1980. Yeah, come on, guys. Get it right. You'd be you just go to movies all day. Gag me with a spoon. Go to, go to historical movies all day. Watch documentaries all day. Oh, that'd be horrible. Be Ken Burns, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. See, yeah. Or expert witness. Twenty <laughs> first <laughs> century expert witness. <laughs> that, no. What if what if you what if the idiocracy scenario plays out and you wake up and you're the smartest man alive? You don't want to be the smartest man alive. No, probably. no. No responsibilities. I'm worried that everyone would be giant. You think they'd all be like seven feet they tall and you'd grow be a dwarf? Like Prometheus, just mm. a tall, tall guys and me. I bet they pig, could probably pygmy Joey. <laughs> yeah, just, bald Aww. pygmy Joey. Um, Nerdy Derby. Did you guys? You heard about the storm? I know, but the Nerdy Derby is a no real rules version of the Pinewood Derby. Joey, were you a Boy Scout? Were you a Cub, Cub Scout? Scout? I was a Cub Scout. Did you do the Pinewood Derby? Uh, no, I did not. We did like a smaller scale version where we made cars out of soap boxes. And... But that's not that's a, a, that's a bigger uh, version. That's a bigger version. Wait, what's a, what's a pine Pinewood wood? Derby is making the small block of pine oh. wood, and then there's a track that slides down. You put you know yeah. five cars on okay, it. Okay, so yeah, I totally did that. Yeah, you put so weights it's, it's, on your soap boxes to make. Well, there's a weight there's maximum a weight, weight max, limit. There's a weight, weight limit. limit. Yeah, and you know. and you have to use all the materials that come in the box. You buy a kit um, with the wheels. There's a lot of third party materials on Amazon. I remember you getting graphite and graphite and some wheels. Yeah, or... lubing up the wheels. Yeah, mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all it, about aerodynamics. It's a Dremel. No, it's not, actually. It's all about mass and smoothness of your wheels. Smoothness of wheels and where the center of mass is. Well, about rooting your car on as loud as you can. That, yes, that is Blow, a good way to do it. Throwing some, throwing some thumbtacks on, on the track at the last minute. Um, the other thing that, uh, that it is all about is uh, not using external power sources which is precisely the point of the nerdy derby. They're saying, "Hey, if it runs on a pinewood derby track, also there's a there's a there's a hill. So you go down a hill and then you go up a little hill and then you go down another hill." Hmm. But they're saying you can add external propulsion and do all sorts of crazy shit. No rocket cars? I don't know if they would allow rocket cars because no they rules. said they said within reasonable safety for the spectators. So I got to think rocket cars are probably off the table. Mm-hmm. Firecracker. We could build rocket cars though. There's nothing stopping us from building rocket cars. Yeah, there's nothing stopping us from building the Pinewood Derby track. Yes, design, we could also build the Pinewood Derby track. Designs are online. Could we put a GoPro on it? Uh, why not? Oh, if yeah. it's rocket powered, the GoPro is not going to slow it down that much. Cool. Um, I got I posted about the Pinewood Derby cars yesterday, and I got a lot of feedback from users. Uh, some accusing me of needing a, uh, a new way to meet nine-year-old boys, which was really creepy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then others giving like the Pinewood Derby, Derby secrets. You. <laughs> Cubs, Wolverine, <laughs> Weebelos, you, Weebelo Scout. <laughs> oh, oh, stop this. Pinewood Derby. I wasn't a Cub Scout. I never champion. did Pinewood Derby. Um, well, Me. The, the best tip. Husky Engineer. Stop this. No. <laughs> the, two, the two best pieces of advice I heard were to make the wheels as narrow as possible, thus making them faster. 
less surface area is less friction. Okay, because you really don't need turning. You don't. Need, you don't need any kind of friction on yeah. the wheels. You just need you know going downhill fast. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of advice was to instead of making it look like a normal car, like an F one car with a pointy nose. Yeah, a lot of people want to recreate the car. Yeah, that's a bad idea because aerodynamics really doesn't matter that much. The better move is to carve a U out of the front of the car so that it rides as far down on the launch peg as possible. And then that extra three inches you get is going to give you a, an advantage going across the finish line. Wait, a U? So you take the, you take, so my hand is the front of the car. Remember, the starting peg is a peg that goes up and then drops down. You're doing a prong. So you make a prong, like a tuning fork. That so is, that, that's, uh, that's manipulating the starting. Yeah, block, mm. but the starting block Mechanism. position makes all the difference in the world. So your car has your, your front tires have to start. Behind. Nothing to do with front. I think it's all about where the Ooh. where the car rests naturally on the peg. Wow, that is real shady. No, that's that's like looking. At you, that's like one of those things. You look at the track, and one car is like has this, has already a, five inches in front of all the other cars because of where the peg is. If you get caught in the peg, that but you're you bone. It. Yeah. Now, is there any advantage to inside lane or outside lane? I don't think that there's any drafting or anything like that in this. Uh, hmm. It's three lanes on the Nerdy Derby. I think we're going to go watch it. I want to see this in person. Where is it at? It's World Maker Fair in New York in, in uh, oh. sept end of September. September oh, 29th. Yeah. We're going to be there. So we could film that. We maybe. could we could cover the Nerdy Derby. <laughs> we have we could enter our own car. We could enter our own car. We could have a testicles car. Okay. I, so we can set it on fire. This is why I bought rockets <laughs> yesterday also. Um. So, yeah, I've been thinking about motor designs. If you have a design, if you want to see us build something Nothing dumb. Nothing I want to do more than beat children at racing. It's, this is for grown-ups. This isn't a child event. It's for all ages. Um, yeah, if you... I think what we should do is build the best design that the community puts together. This is my plan Why for the Why don't we build Derby. the best design we can think of? I think that the community is smarter than us. Don't be lazy. Build... To build your own design. Why don't you build your own design then, Chan? We can raise our designs. See who why don't we the... have them send it to the MakerBot and the MakerBot will build it for it us? It doesn't work that way. Why, why can't the MakerBot build the design? Well, the MakerBot could print the body, but we can. Yeah. Yeah. We can definitely do that. MakerBot should, the MakerBot should make the you, car. You're saying the Maker... I don't think we want to print wheels. I think printed wheels are going to be real slow. No, no. Just the body. And yeah. And put the, the axle and the wheels on. Yes. We can do that. Yes. So somebody print a design. Design a body for us or else I'm just going to make a big square. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll take it to the Nerdy Derby and and race it, if, assuming we we don't fuck something up and miss it or something. Um, and then the last item is that the Genius, the Apple Genius Guidebook leaked Gizmodo this week, and it is fascinating reading. I encourage everyone to go look at that story uh, because it goes into the tale all the way down to the types of language that the Apple geniuses are allowed to use. Did your phone crash? No, no, it it stopped responding. Norm, hmm. phones don't crash. Oh, is this it? Yeah, that's it's stuff like okay. that. It it also talked about how you identify customers, like you know how how like you go up and you sign into the desk. Well, you may not, but you go in and sign into the desk. Always walk into the Apple Store looking like you know what you're doing. So if I walk no in there, kind of, well, well, then they're gonna then they know. Oh, the fish! Ooh, well, that guy wants to buy an accessory. <laughs> he wants to buy a, a, a stand. He wants an iTunes gift card. The thing the thing that I liked was the um, never never apologize for the hardware always apologize for the way they're feeling. So if you didn't back up your computer and your hard drive crashed and you lost 10 years of family photos and the baby pictures and all that stuff and people are it's losing not, their it's, shit. It's not the computer's fault. It's your feelings fault. Right. Why are you so I'm sad? I'm sorry you feel that way. It's, it, why are you feeling so sad? It's not our computer's fault you're feeling so sad. It's your emotions. I'm sorry you're an emotional I, person. I think you're missing the point. I'm sorry you're so nostalgic. <laughs> That's not exactly the way they say it when you go to the store. I'm sorry you feel that way, Norman, but can we interest you in buying an external hard drive so this doesn't so that's happen not an in apology the future? At all. That's that's the that's the I'm sorry that I'm I'm regretful that you are so that you are in a terrible situation. That's I'm sorry I got but caught. I am not <laughs> not I'm sorry not, for doing I the thing that I got caught. It's for. not I'm taking responsibility. Is I have regret that this situation is in existence right now. You're correct. That is exactly the scenario. So, so yeah, it's on Gizmodo. You should read it. It's really entertaining. Uh, I'm going to play some music, unless we have any more news. Any more news? I'm sure there's more news. I, of course, but I mean, we got to stop at some point. I mean, we've talked about news okay. for a really long time. Uh, and then we'll talk about what we've been testing, because I think that's very interesting right now. Hey, Norman Chan. Hey, Will Smith. What have you been testing? Uh, we did our quick look of the, uh, Microsoft 
Wedge Touch Mouse and Wedge Mobile Keyboard this week. These are official Windows 8 peripherals, correct? Mm, they are indeed official Windows 8 peripherals, charms and all. What if you don't have Windows 8 yet? And you can, can still, you use, still them. use them? Yeah, you can still use them. Okay. Yeah. Are they any good? Uh, I like the mouse. Okay. Is the keyboard okay? Keyboard is okay. I'm unsold on the wedge design of the keyboard. Did the, you did the you bulge. did you like the Windows 8 buttons? I don't have Windows 8 installed. Is anything interesting on Daring Fireball right now? Uh, no, not really. Mm. Uh, I've been testing. I've been doing more MakerBot work. I printed one of those mixtapes. I, pr- I printed a mixtape real early on because we bought a couple of those kits. So we're going to do a quick look at that uh, probably next week for the week after. Or maybe even for next week. Let's get crazy. Um, but I'm having some warping problems with it. Warping is where the plastic cools at an uneven rate. So uh, if it cools too fast and it peels, curls back up off of the build platform... And then it you get unlevel builds. So I rigged up a uh, temporary way to block the air from interacting with the print as it's happening. MakerBot looks real silly. I kind of it's kind of hoopty. It looks like the uh, it looks like the robot that Cartman is in South yeah, Park. Yeah, looks like awesome. 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 Yeah, it looks kind of. I am a MakerBot. <laughs> I'll write MakerBot on the box. My body. I tape pieces of cardboard to the holes in the MakerBot. Okay. You have you seen my robot friend? Such a good episode. Um, it does look like awesome. The spools in the back look like the hands. Oh my god, you're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, well, wow. I'm going to put a sign on the front that says Maker Bot O. Uh, so yeah, we got that going on. Uh, bags. I've been testing bags. I've come to a conclusion on the first three bags. I think I'm going to do the. I think I'm going to do them in sets of three because I think it, it's crazy to do bigger sets than that. Um, so. Uh, I have a couple bags that I really like. One that I think is okay, but not real good for normal human beings. Uh, and then we'll do some more later on. And uh, you have committed to tweeting your weight? I'm going to turn the tweet your weight on on the scales. Are there two scales? Is I can't a... remember if the Fitbit does the tweet your weight, but the Withings one definitely does that. Okay, because if there are two, I will also commit to tweeting my weight. Okay. Let us do a tweet weight, weight tweet off. I don't think that the Fitbit one is as accurate as the Withings one. As a, as a scale? As a scale. Because the Withings, the Fitbit one is frequently a pound or a pound and a half lighter than both the Wii Fit and the Withings scale. So either the Wii Fit and the are Withings you, are scale. Are you releasing Krakens like before and after? <laughs> I have not. No, I, I, although, you know, when you have a decimal pound precision scale, there's a strong temptation to do before and after weighings. I do that all the time. All the time. All the time. Really? <laughs> That's why I, I want the idea of having a toilet. That tells you how much liquid you are releasing. Displacing? Dis- absolutely. Oh, gross, dude. And, and, and show me in a pint glass um, metaphor. How, am I displacing one pint glass or two pint well, glasses worth of liquid? What if the, what if the toilet measured your, the spectrographic content of your urine and I looked at I don't, that I don't need the spe- to I tell you whether it no. filled you with a cup of water that you needed to drink if you, you, you know, your pee you was too yellow? should always water anyway. It's a good policy. I always keep my pee clear. Really? That's my policy. If my pee's yellow, I need to drink more water. Okay. So well, or beer. Ne- never Either one works. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, no, that's not right. Um, yeah, hey, did you see this, this spectroscope, spectrometer Kickstarter the other day? Nope. There is a guy who's making a spectroscope, spectroscopic spectro, spectrometer. Sorry. There's a guy who's making a spectrometer attachment for phones. He's making a cheap spectrometer and he's kickstartering it. It starts at like thirty or forty dollars for an Android phone attachment, and you can go up to a, a tabletop thing for like a hundred bucks. I ordered all of them because that is awesome. And the spectrometer lets you analyze the molecular, um, like the the breakdown of elements inside a inside a sample of some, whatever you want to. How big the sample? Uh, I don't have any idea. I watched the video. I was immediately Does it sold. Use lasers? I I I uh, eh? mm, How much is eh? it? Four hundred bucks for all oh of them, uh, or like thirty, forty, fifty bucks for the for the cheapos. I wanted to see the range because typically spectrometers are pretty expensive items. So I thought we could use it for coffee. So that's that's a thing that may or may not ever happen. That may be money that was flushed straight down the toilet. We will see. Kickstarter. Um, I took home that Bold- Bodum cold brew press. It's a relatively new device from those guys, and it's designed to make uh, cold brewed coffee. Rather than, you know, normally you do a French press and you pour in the hot, the boiling hot water and you let it sit for four minutes and then you plunge it and pour the coffee out. Uh, this you do just like that uh, Hario, um, the Hario cold brew leader thing that we tested out last year. Um, and I don't like it at all. I think it's really bad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually 
I've gone out and looked for better instructions for using because I think I might be doing something wrong. Like the coffee that came out, it was so bad. I think I might have been doing something wrong. What, what is it? What's it called? So it's a French press. But um, it uses cold water to brew instead of... So, so yeah, you, you put the coarse coffee in, yeah. ground, coarse ground. You let it sit all stirred up with just a lid on in the fridge overnight or 24 hours or so. And then when you're ready to, to do the plunge, you take the, the sealed lid off and you put the plunger in, you plunge it, and then you have about a liter and 1.2 liters of, of cold brewed coffee. So it brews with a, a longer amount of time. Duration. Okay. Yeah, so we've tested a bunch of stuff. that We we tested the toddy, which does this. You can do it just with like a Chemex and a normal paper filter huh. if you're a little patient. Um, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's no reason you can't honestly just do it with a, like a mason jar and some coffee and then strain that through a cheesecloth or a normal paper coffee filter. Um, but yeah, so this thing, the problem is unless you drink that whole 1.5 liters or dump it into another jar, then the sediment that's in the bottom of the press is going to make, uh, it's going to get gross because it's going to keep leaching out and make the coffee really bitter and acidic, which is what happened to me. Um, so you end up having to like the Hario thing has a filter that kind of drops into the top. And then when you're done brewing the coffee, you just lift the filter out, clean it out and you leave the coffee in the, in the glass carafe, um, which seems to work a lot better. Both of them are kind of a little ridiculous though. Although I do quite like the Hario, Hario cold brewer. Um, so yeah, that's the thing that I'm testing. We'll do a quick look at that before too long. It's been a while since we've done any coffee stuff. Um, and uh, I've also we've also been testing. Well, we tested some other stuff. We'll talk about later. Uh, that you know, fire and baseball bats and liquid nitrogen and stuff. Um, you want to take some questions, Joey? Yeah. Anything you've been testing? No, Left for Dead. Okay. Did you play the Minecraft Left for Dead? I did play the Minecraft. How was that? Deathcraft. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a little crazy with all the Minecraft assets. Is it? It's it's Left for Dead the game with Minecraft assets. Yes. No, it's a, it's a it's a custom made campaign. It's a user campaign for Left for Dead though. Yeah. Okay. And, and the, yeah for using Left for Dead Minecraft two, assets. using Minecraft assets uh, like s- characters are all Minecraft weapons, characters. Weapons, enemies. The weapons all look levels, like your your, your melee weapons look like yeah. you know, the diamond, diamond sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. And the the guns the same. Um, the only thing that stands out as like not a Minecraft asset is fire. So like you see the real fire in a Minecraft world, but. Sounds good. It's a lot of fun. Do you, do you kill creepers? Creepers are, I believe, spitters. So all the special infected are creatures from Minecraft. What like, are the regular zombies? Regular zombies are just the regular, oh, okay. like the, the creeper. Uh, what's a creeper? Is that a zombie? The, 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 yeah, normal zombie creeper. The green guys? Yeah, the green guys are the zombies. The spiders are the spitters. They have like oh, a tall, skinny guy uh, as something. The, the witches mm-hmm. are, the witches are little girls, right? Yep. The Is witches. This on the Xbox or on the, oh no, this is the Left 4 Dead. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm confused. No, we left for Dead two on Steam. Um, okay, on like L four D two maps. I think dot com is where you get these custom campaigns. The witch is the chicken. That seems about right. <laughs> you see the little chicken wandering Don't around. Don't touch the chicken. <laughs> exactly, the chicken starts chasing Does it you. Scream like it's still the witch. Yeah, all, oh, all the sound it's is the same. <laughs> it's this That's terrifying. Crazy uh, chicken or duck, whatever it is. Wow, you, you if you you never want to touch the witch. Remember that? Yeah, people get so pissed off about that. Yeah. Don't touch the Well, witch. there's always the one person who touches it, it ch- chases him. I mean, we, we tactically do. Yeah, I use I'm, the shotgun. I play with, with people that I've, I play with all the time, so we kind of have our strategies down, so one person will get it riled up, run back, and we'll all just shoot it. We're or you just good. walk up real close with the shotgun and boom, right in the face. It's I a never low tried percentage. That. I'm afraid to get close to it. I it's a good policy. Yeah. I've decided that that's one of my favorite games. It's really good. Yeah. I wish more people played it. That's all I've been testing. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's take some questions and call it a show. Emails? Well, but we do the other one. Emails. It's, you know, we don't do emails, we do emails. No, 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 no. Questions. Boom. If you have a question for This Is Only a Test, send it to podcastattested.com. Label it as This Is Only a Test question. Keep it uh, audio questions only, please. Short, under 45 seconds. Uh, make sure you don't sound like you're recording it from the back of a public bus. Uh, here is the first question. It's about operating systems. Hello, Tested Podcasters. This is DJ from Chattanooga, Tennessee home of the fastest consumer broadband in the Western Hemisphere. I have a couple of upgrade questions regarding OS X and Windows 8. If I upgrade to Mountain Lion, will it affect my Boot Camp Windows 7 installation? And if that's all good, can I upgrade the Boot Camp Windows 7 to Windows 8 in October, or would I need to do a fresh install? 
I can't find any information on the internet about this, and the geniuses at the Apple Store were clueless. So thank you very much, and always be testing. Both of those things should be fine. Um, I don't. I just did this. Have you did? Did you do the Windows Eight Boot Camp? No. no oh, I'm mountain, sorry. You did. Uh, wind, uh, mountain I did Lion. Mountain Lion yes. update with and Boot Camp. Boot Camp and is Boot Camp's fine. fine. My exactly. Windows Seven Boot Camp is fine. Yeah. yeah. I, I would. I generally recommend not doing the the Boot Camp with a new version of Windows. I give it a week or two and make sure the drivers are fine. I would do I would. a clean install for the Boot Camp Windows. Really? Yes. Why? Just because when it, when it updates and it refreshes the the boot. It's, it, I, I, don't, I don't trust the... Uh, oh, not to fuck up the MBR. Exactly. It should be fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I haven't... The first part is definitely okay. Uh, the Windows 8 upgrade, I would hang back on and let other people uh, pave the way first. So, yeah. That was easy. Chattanooga has really fast broadband, guys. Not as fast as Kansas City. I do not think that that is correct. Kansas City has... Kansas City has Google broadband, but I think mm-hmm. Chattanooga is faster, and also it's rolled out. Man, when you type chat into Google, the first thing it suggests is roulette. That is not good. <laughs> is that still something? Chat roulette? Chattanooga is a funny word. It's spelled, spelled weird. I want to gamble now. Why, why do you want to gamble? Oh, because roulette. Of roulette? heard the word roulette. <laughs> um, Trigger words. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, roulette played, it played a bit of a role in the book I'm reading right now. Um, let's, uh, yeah, America's fastest broadband network, April 3rd, one gigabit per second fiber. That's pretty fast. Um, I'm going to try to find the next question here. Here it is. Hey guys, this is Mike and I have a question about passwords. I read that article you guys were talking about that Matt Honan wrote regarding how he was hacked and it made me finally decide to start using LastPass. I found it to be a very useful program and I would recommend it to anyone who's considering it. My question, though, is about sites themselves and their password policies. As I was going through and updating my passwords to more secure versions, I came across sites that had odd restrictions, such as Netflix, which requires you to have a password between four and ten characters, and I don't necessarily understand why. I was wondering if you have any insight as to why sites have restrictions in place that allow for, that only allow for such short uh, password lengths. Any insight you guys have would be helpful. Thanks, and always be testing. The minimum is probably for security reasons. The maximum is probably for compatibility with uh, input with devices. Well, le- legacy devices a lot yeah. of times, or legacy clients. Or it could be just BS arbitrary rule. I for, mean, it's, it's definitely not a database thing on their side. Like, well, it could, I mean, for Netflix, it could be though, because they have the API. Like, their API is kind of old at this point, and it may be that they just fucked up when they started and haven't bothered to change it yet. So if they do change it, then that would it would make all of the old clients that haven't been updated in a while stop working, which would be bad for them. Um, but 16 yeah. character passwords, guys. I I think anything above eight is probably. <laughs> Joey, okay. don't count out the number of letter of words in your. No, you don't have enough uh, fingers. Wait, one, two, five, four. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think that's just bad work on most of their parts. I think there was a right. website that um, I think Gary tweeted. Uh, don't put your word. passwords in random websites. It's well, a terrible. No, idea. you should not put your password in a random website, but you can test strings of characters and. And it will tell you how long uh, it would typically take for a hacker. How long was yours? How long? 365 years to 85 years? Mine was 96 million years. How long was yours? I got to do this. What is it? Okay, never mind. <laughs> don't don't put your password into don't sites. Don't put your real password into sites, even if it's not a site where you have to press enter. Don't put your password into fields, basically. Yeah. Any field. Do you ever do that, though? Like, you'll type in your password for the PC, thinking your PC is locked or something before the screen comes up, and then you realize no. you just typed it into IM or something? That is that <laughs> real sounds bad. Like something you did, Will. I've done that before. It's not, oh. not smart. Oh, I really meant this. I'm sorry. Hit my key. And, uh, hey, I was just, I was talking to my, yeah. I was talking to what my mother I, I about her maiden name. Quick, quick, quick what? brown fox jumped over a lazy dog. What? <laughs> yeah, that's my password. Um, so I guess that'll do it for us this week. Uh, oh, also, we're taking questions for the Adam podcast. So if you have questions for Adam, uh, send them to the podcast at tested.com email and indicate that they are for still untitled in the subject line, please, because that'll make it much easier for me uh, and much more likely for me to actually read the email. And yes, we acknowledge uh, Neil Armstrong did pass over the weekend, but we talked all about that on we, uh, Still Untitled. Yes, that is true at length. Um, so that'll do it for us this week. Uh, for Norman and Joey, thank you guys as always. Uh, I'm going to get packs this weekend. So if you're there and you see me, say hi. I'll be walking around. Uh, I might have some tested stickers if you promise not to stick them on things that aren't Ryan Davis. 
Um, anything to uh, uh, Jamie video going up today, later today. It's probably already up actually by the time you see this. Uh, we talked about welding. It's like a hot glue gun for metal. And uh, we just launched a maker forum on the site too. So if you want to talk about projects that you are building or make things you are making, uh, that is a perfect place to do that. Everything from paper mache to cardboard. Well, Two types of paper. That's all that's in there. Okay. <laughs> Music also. And food. Put food in there too if you want. That's cool too. Anything that you make. Or babies. Yeah, no poop pictures. We don't want to see anything that, that goes into a toilet. So uh, yeah, that'll do it for us this week. Anything to plug, Norm? Joey? Joey Norm? Norm Joey? No? Yeah. We're good? <clears throat> Let's plug the podcast. Okay, we'll see you guys next Thursday, as always, with another episode of This Is Only Test. See you guys later. Bye. 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 Oh, wait. Hold on. Outro. we got to play the outro. And then we, I guess we should do fake out. Well, we won't do fake out things this week. Uh, today's outro is from Zeno. Hi there. I didn't see you. Test it. I think you were making modem noises. No, I think it was a baby related. Really? Oh. Squeamish. That might be it. Okay. Uh, see you guys later. Bye. Bye.